right, for the record, my name is Detective Rob Thomas. My badge number is 3917. I'm attached to the Toronto Police Sex Crimes Unit uh, polygraph. Today's date is uh, Monday, uh, April 23rd, 2018. Time by my clock is approximately 10.46 in the evening. I'm presently at 32 Division on Ellerslie uh, uh, Drive, I believe. Uh, second floor, soft interview room. This is the only soft interview room in the building. My purpose for being here today is to interview a gentleman by the name of Alec Minasian. Uh, Alex, spelled A-L-E-X, last name M-I-N-A-S-S-I-A-N, -S -S date of birth of November 3rd, 1992, with respect to an incident that occurred earlier today on Young Street between Shepherd and Finch. It's my understanding that uh, Mr. Minnesian uh, was arrested uh, later this afternoon, uh, initially on nine counts of first-degree murder. Uh, that's been subsequently upgraded to 10 counts of first-degree murder and 15 counts of attempt murder. He's presently in custody here at 32 Division. Any conversation that I have with uh, Mr. Minnesian today is by no means meant to offend the individuals involved in this, uh, this investigation, the families, the victims, uh, or for that matter, uh, uh, Mr. Minnesian himself or his family. My only purpose for conducting this interview today is to come to some understanding of his involvement in this, in this, uh, in this incident. Just have a seat right there, please. Thanks very much. Good, how are you? Good, good. Did you drink water? Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. so much. How are you feeling? I'm good. You feeling okay? My name's Rob Thomas. Nice to meet you. Hi, how are you? How are you? You doing okay? Yeah. Yeah, you probably had better days than this, I guess, eh? Yeah. You know? Well, I am yeah. a little shaken, to be honest. A little shaken? It's not, like, it's not my usual day, obviously. Yeah, yeah, no, I can appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Alec. Do mind if I call you Alec? Yeah, sure. Is it, what do your friends normally call you? Alec. Alec. Yeah. Uh, Alec, my name's Rob Thomas, so I want you to call me Rob from here on in, okay? Okay. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Alec, uh, I want you to understand something. I'm a senior detective with the Toronto Police. Do you understand what that means? Uh, yes. You know I'm a police officer? Yes. Okay. I don't wear a, a, a uniform. Uh, I wear a, a, a suit and tie because of the type of work I, that I do. But although I'm in a, a suit and tie, I'm, I'm an actual police officer, okay? Um, and I'm the one of the senior investigators on this case, okay? I got called in for this, this, this specific case because of what's happened and the involvement and everything else that's been going on, okay? Uh, before we get started, I want you to know that we're being videotaped and audio taped, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. Do you know what I mean by that? Yes, everything I see and do is being captured. Exactly, yeah, on, on audio and video, okay? Now, uh, here's what I want to do, uh, Alec. Um, 
I want to talk to you. Okay. Um, we're going to spend a, a, a good deal of time together. Okay. Uh -huh. um, it's important that I talk to you. All right. Um, I'm going to ask you questions. Okay. I'm going to ask you questions about uh, your background, your education, uh, your relationships with your family and friends, um, work, travel. And I'm going to ask you questions about what happened today. Okay. Um, you don't have to answer those questions if you don't want. Okay. You understand that? Yes. Um, but if you do decide to a answer my questions, okay, uh, I just ask that you do two things for me. Okay. First thing is I ask that uh, you treat me with respect. Okay. Uh, I promise to treat you with respect throughout the entire night. Okay. All I ask is you do the same for me. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, the other thing I ask, Alec, and, I, and I've been doing this a long time, okay, uh, and I typically never have any problems with people or anything like that. I don't expect to have a problem with you today, but um, if you do decide to answer my questions, would you do me the favor and, and just speak from the heart, okay? And just be truthful. That's all I ask. Does that sound fair? Yes. Is that okay? Okay. Um, now, my understanding is earlier today, um, there was an incident and you ultimately got arrested by a police officer. Do you remember that? I do remember getting arrested. Okay. Uh, do you remember uh, it was a uniformed police officer who arrested you? So in other words, he was a police officer in a, in a uniform? Yes, I remember he had a uniform. Yeah, okay. And I know there was a bit of an altercation. We'll get into that. But basically, I just want to kind of uh, you know, cover off a few points before we get started. My understanding is that uh, that incident, the time that you got arrested, you were on or near the area of Young Street earlier today. Is that right? Uh, and a police officer told you that you were going to be placed under arrest. And he placed you under arrest. Do you remember that? I remember that. Okay. Do you remember what he arrested you for? I believe I may have been arrested for something similar to murder. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I, uh, I believe it was originally you were arrested for attempted murder, and subsequent to that, uh, the officer placed you in handcuffs, is that right? Yes. Yeah, and then he, uh, um, he placed you in the back of his car, correct? Correct. Uh, and then uh, you were transported, and you were you were delivered here in a police car to, fit to 32 Division. Correct. Do you remember that? And following that, you uh, were taken into the building, and you spoke to, uh, I believe it was a, a gentleman, uh, and he's known as a staff sergeant. He would have had three stripes on his on his shoulder with a crown. He would have asked you questions about your your medical uh, history, whether or not you were suicidal. Uh, whether or not you understood why you were being placed under arrest? I remember that. Okay. When you were placed under arrest, did the officer read, read anything to you? I remember being read a, uh, s the signs on the uh, left-hand wall uh, stating um, my rights. Okay, okay. So you would have been read either at the time you were arrested or certainly when you got into the police station, you were providing your rights to counsel. Is that right? So it would have been something like this. You're going to be arrested for a, attempted murder. It's my duty to inform you that you have the right to retain a struck counsel without delay. You have the right to telephone and lawyer your wish. Mm. You also have the right to... Yeah, now, yeah now I'm starting to come back. Yeah, I remember. Okay, let me just finish that. here because it's important you understand this. Uh, you have the right to telephone any lawyer you wish. You also have the right to free advice from a legal aid lawyer. If you're charged with a defense, you may apply to the Ontario Legal Aid Plan for assistance. 1-800-265-0451 is a toll-free number that will put you in contact with a legal aid duty counsel lawyer for free legal advice right now. Do you remember that? Yeah, now I remember that. Do you remember the officer reading you that? To be honest, um, the, I encountered uh, very uh, I encountered various police officers. I don't remember which one read me that. Okay, all right. Uh, but nevertheless, you were read, you were read, we call that caution, you were read that caution. Yes, actually, now that you mentioned the word caution, I do remember hearing the words of primary caution and secondary caution. Okay, great, okay, great, okay, that's, that's interesting, because not a lot of people can rem remember those words. Okay, so that's, what I read you is a, what we refer to as a primary caution. 
So you don't, let me just get this straight. You're not sure if you remember the police officer reading you those rights or if you were read those, that, that primary caution in the building. Is that right? Uh, actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure I was read the, 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 the caution inside that room within the building okay. with the uh, camera and the desk. Right, right. So we call that the booking hall. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you know what do you, do, you, do you know what it is that that I just read to you? What 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 was read to you uh, when you were inside the booking hall? Do you know what what that means? I believe, to my best understanding, it means, as you said before, um, the rights that I have, um, my right to counsel. Right. Do you know what counsel? Do you know what counsel means? Uh, and a, a lawyer or attorney. Perfect, exactly, yeah. So the, what that means is actually a couple things. It means that you can call a lawyer. One, one means at the time you were placed under arrest, you were being placed under arrest for attempted murder. Uh, what that primary caution means, that you uh, you can speak to a lawyer, okay, uh, or we call it counsel. Uh, uh, if you don't have a lawyer or counsel of choice, uh, it means that you can call uh, a free lawyer. And we call that duty counsel or uh, legal aid, okay? Um, and the 1-800-265-0451 is a toll-free number that you can call to speak to duty counsel or legal aid for free legal advice. Do you understand? Do you understand what that means? Yes. So it basically means you can call a lawyer. If you don't have a lawyer, you can speak to a free lawyer, right? What it also means is that if you were charged with an offense, so if you're charged by the police for a crime, uh, and you can't afford a lawyer, okay? You can uh, you can apply to the, the the government to pay for your lawyer. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And uh, we call that legal aid. Okay. Um, now, my understanding is um, the officers then provided you a secondary caution. Yes. Okay. It would have been something like this. Uh, you're going to be charged with attempted murder. You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so, but whatever you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand what that means? Uh, yes, it means that I'm not required to speak, but anything I say can and you will be used against me. Yeah, well, that's the sort of the American version of the Miranda rights in Canada. Yeah, I've watched too much TV. You watch it? <laughs> so do I. So do I. Uh, what, what, you watch a lot of TV, like TV programs, like crime drama programs on TV? Uh, j it's one of the, I, I used to watch a lot of CSI. Oh, you did? I love, I love that show, but, um, yeah, so in the States, they call that the Miranda. Anything you say in Canada will be used against you in a court of law. In Canada, we're a little bit different than the United States. I like to think we're a lot different, actually, than the United States. And what we have uh, in Canada is, is, is a different type of caution. Anything that you say can be entered into evidence. And so anything that you say to me today, uh, because we're being videotaped and audio taped, a judge can watch that, okay? And he can listen to what it is you're saying. Okay, all right. Um, now, uh, did the officers read you any other cautions? I don't remember being read any other cautions, to be honest. Okay, I want to read one more to you. And uh, it goes like this. If you've spoken to any police officer or to anyone in authority, or if any such person has spoken to you in connection with this case, I want it clearly understood that I do not want it to influence you in making a statement. Yes, actually, I do remember being uh, read that. You do, eh? Okay. When do you remember being read that? Uh, while I was in my cell by okay. a um, by a non-uniformed officer. He was uh, dressed uh, formally. Okay, was he dressed? Similar to you. Oh, I see. In a suit and tie? Yes. Oh, I, I believe he may have been a detective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, well, that makes sense. Um, do, do you understand what that means? Uh, yes, it means that... Um, any any statement, whenever I'm making a statement, it shouldn't be affected by something that one cop said to me. It should just be simply whatever I feel is the best as my defense. You, you're absolutely right. You know what? You hit it right on the head. You know what? Um, uh, and I thank you for that. That's that's very important. Yeah. Basically, what it means is that um, if you've spoken to any police officer, and I. You may not have spoken to a lot of police officers, but I know a lot of police officers have spoken to you today. Everything from the uniformed officer who arrested you right through to the booking officers who uh, um, uh, uh, 
collected your information when you came into the station right up to the officers who came down into the cells and 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 advised you of of further charges that were gonna be laid. you've spoken to a lot of police officers today am i am i right yes how many in total do you think you've spoken to i would say at least five at least five okay uh what i what what that means that caution that i i gave you what that means is that if anybody if any of those officers or anybody else for that matter have said to you that you have to talk to me okay that's incorrect is it, do you understand that? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, you don't have to talk to me, okay? So if anybody uh, has uh, told you that you have to speak to me, I don't want you to listen to what they they, they said, all right? Uh, I'm assuming nobody's threatened you or made you any kind of promise? Uh, no. Nobody's threatened you? No. No. Nobody's promised, made, you, made, made promises? No. For you? Okay. Um, we call those inducements. So nobody's... nobody's uh, uh, offered you any type of inducement, I hope, or anything like that. Oh, no. Okay. So basically what it means is that um, you don't have to listen to uh, what the police have said to you previously, prior to you meeting me here today, um, and that if you do decide to talk to me, that it just be, like I said, from the heart and it, and it be truthful. We call that being voluntary. Does that make sense? Yes. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, now, in addition to that, I just want to I just want to clarify one more thing. Um, did you... Did you speak to the police and, and tell them what happened today? Sorry, I am just uh, need a minute to think about that. Are you asking if I in any way confessed? Well, I'm, I'm asking if you, you uh, yes, if you confessed or if you uh, made a statement at all to any other police officer. I never made any significant statement about any events that occurred before I was arrested. Great, great. Okay, so uh, if you did have any conversation with any police officer prior to being brought into this room, all right, and that includes uh, making a statement or a confession, okay, uh, I want you to ignore what you've said, okay, and uh, I don't want you to uh, refer back to that conversation, okay, and what I mean by referring back, I don't want you to tell me uh, about any conversations you've had with any other police officers, okay? okay. Uh, what I'd like to do is start fresh. We call this a clean slate. Okay. So from here on in, okay, I want this to be a fresh start. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Pretty pretty straightforward. Eh? Uh, okay. Now, uh, when the officer arrested you, did uh, uh, he put handcuffs on you? Yes. Right. Um, and uh, my understanding is the handcuffs were behind your back. Yes. Okay. And uh, uh, um, he did he he patted you down. Did he, what I mean by that, did he search you? I remember, I remember being searched at, I, actually I remember later on, as o other officers uh, came in, mm -hmm. I was uh, stood up, brought uh, to the cruiser, and then as I was leaning on the car, I remember at that point I was being searched. Okay, all right, and so uh, as far as the search is concerned, what, uh, what uh, to what extent were you searched? In other words, what did they search? What did the officers For, do? Uh, I w it was a pat down of the entire body to make sure there was no weapons or anything like that on me. Okay. And how do you know that they uh, they were searching for weapons and things like that? Because uh, they, uh, I remember they were searching my pockets. They were feeling my chest, my back, my legs. Uh, so that would be an indication that they feel uh, felt I had weapons on me. Okay. Did the officers say anything to you while they were doing this? I don't remember uh, exactly what they said. Okay. Uh, other than just uh, stand still. Okay. And the lines of that. Did anybody tell you that they were searching for weapons? I do remember, although I don't remember the exact words, I do remember there was a mention of being uh, searched for weapons. I, I may, they may not have been speaking directly to me, but they may have been speaking to each other. Okay. Did they take your clothes off? No. Did uh, any part of your clothing come off? No. Okay. And so then from there you were placed in the car? Correct. Okay. All right. And uh, um, how many police officers were in the car while you were being driven to the station? Two. Two. Okay. And uh, I'm presuming they were both in the front? Yes. Okay. And did you have any conversation with the police officers? No. Okay. And then you arrived here at the station? Yes. Okay. And how long of a, how long of a, r a drive was that? About 10 minutes. About 10 minutes. Okay. And um, uh, did it appear to be a direct route? 
Yes. In other words, they didn't stop for coffee or anything like that? Or no. Okay. All right. And, um, and then uh, you came into a, a garage? Yes. Okay. We call that the selling port. That's what that we refer to that as. And uh, um, you were, I, I understand you were taken out of the back seat of the car? Yes. And then you were led to a, a desk? Yes. And there was an, an officer, an of, uh, a, se a senior officer, a, a higher ranking officer was behind that desk. You probably didn't know that, but we, we call that officer the officer in charge of the station. Do you understand that? Yes. And uh, uh, he would have asked you some questions? Yes. Okay. And um, my understanding is those questions uh, dealt specifically with uh, any medical issues? Uh, yes. Right? And um, whether or not you understood why you were being placed under arrest? Yes. And um, and whether or not you understood your rights to counsel or the right your right to, to call a lawyer? Yes. Okay. And then um, from there, my understanding is you were taken to the cell area? Yes. Okay. And you were uh, placed in a cell. And uh, uh, my understanding is that cell is a bathroom. It has a toilet. Yes. It has a toilet and a sink. Yes. And, uh, and then following that, now there were a couple of other events that are important. Uh, one was, um, my understanding is that you were given an opportunity to speak to a lawyer. Yes. Okay. And you, uh, you indicated to the officers that you didn't have a lawyer. Correct. And that you didn't know who to call. Correct. And so the officers offered you an opportunity to speak to duty counsel, which is that free legal service that I talked about. Correct. Okay. And my understanding is you spoke to, to duty counsel. Correct. Okay. Um, and you did that in private, is that right? Correct. In other words, there wasn't anybody listening to your conversation? Correct. Okay. Now, I don't want you to tell me what the lawyer said, but did you understand what the lawyer was telling you? Yes. Okay. Are you satisfied with the information that he told you? Yes. Okay. Um, now, uh, following that, my understanding is, uh, and I might might have gotten the sequence of events uh, mixed up, so correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there's been a lot going on today, and I've been very busy, but uh, my understanding is at some point, uh, if I'm not mistaken, a police officer in a suit came down, and he told you that the he, he updated you with respect to the charges that were going to be laid. Yes. Okay. And did, do you remember what he said to you? Yes. So an initial, originally the charges were nine counts of first degree murder. Right. Then later on it got updated to 10 counts of first degree murder plus uh, 15 counts of attempted murder. It, exactly. Yes. That's my understanding. So my understanding is um, as the night progressed and as we were learning more information, uh, it, it came to our attention that uh, um, seven people have, have, have died. Sorry, nine people have died. I apologize. Uh, um, as a result of an incident that occurred on Young Street. And uh, so subsequent to that, uh, my understanding is the officers came down and they spoke to you to advise you that, you would, you, that the charges would be upgraded to nine counts of first degree murder. Do you understand what first degree murder is? It's a premediated pre murder and completely intentional and considered to be what's known as in cold blood. Well, yeah, yeah that's a fairly, uh, a fairly, uh, precise way of uh, describing it. What we, we call it premeditated. It means premeditated. You understand what premeditated means? Yes, it means it would mean that someone planned for that murder in advance. Right, planning and deliberation. In other words, you, you um, if somebody committed first degree murder, they would have uh, took the time out to think about what they were going to do. Uh, sit down and uh, uh, deliberate over the, the plan. So in other words, they were going to sit down and go over the details of the plan, figure out what it is they were going to do, and how they were going to execute the plan, and so on and so forth, to commit a murder. Plan and deliberate. That's what it means. So there's a lot of thought and energy that goes into planning to kill somebody. That's that's what first degree murder is. Okay. Um, and so initially it was nine counts of first degree murder. And uh, do you remember the officer that uh, that told you told you that? I believe if I, I believe if I remember correctly, it was the officer wearing the suit. The officer wearing the suit, who uh, walked you in here today, or walked you into this room? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, now, did he tell you that you could speak to a lawyer again? Yes. Okay. So he gave you your rights to counsel again. 
Yes. Okay. Uh, and in answer to th that caution, that first caution, uh, do you do you understand? Did you understand what you were being arrested for? Yes. Okay. Did you understand that the charges were now being upgraded to nine counts of first degree murder? Yes. And did you understand that you could call a lawyer again? Yes. Okay. And what did you say to the officer in response to calling a lawyer again? I, th I think I simply just acknowledged. I said, okay. Okay. And my understanding is he asked you, do you want to speak to a lawyer again? Do you remember what you said to him? I believe I said no thanks. Okay. That's the reason I did so, the reason I gave that response was because since I had already spoken to a lawyer very recently, I felt that I wouldn't be given new information at that point. Right, right. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. That was my understanding. And then uh, subsequent to that, um, now again, I might have the, 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 uh, the facts mixed up, um, just in terms of the chronology. But uh, my understanding is, uh, did somebody come down and take photos of you? Yes. Okay. Was that, uh, okay, well, uh, let's maybe It actually on happened that. twice. Okay. Uh, and initially, the first time it happened was very, at the very beginning of when I got arrested. Right. Um, I sat down in a chair, I had front, left, right, right. and later on in the evening, I again had, um, uh, I was standing up in front of that chair and had left, uh, right, front, and back. Okay, well let's talk about that. So the first time you had your photo taken, front, left, and right, where was that done? Inside the uh, room with the uh, camera and the fingerprint machine, ab uh, about a few, s about ten steps away from the uh, cell block I was in. Okay, so they took you out of the cells. Yes. Into what we call the print room. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, uh, the booker would have, we call him the booker, the individual that takes your photographs and takes your fingerprints. Uh, we call him the booker. Did they take your fingerprints at all? Yes. They did. Eh? Okay. It was at the same time that I initially had my uh, picture taken. Okay, all right, okay. And uh, and then from there you were returned to the cell? Yes. Okay, and then you were, uh, you were, uh, uh, you were, your photographs were taken once again, or you were photographed once again after that, so you were photographed a second time? Yes. Okay, and where did that take place? In the same uh, room. In the same room. room, okay. Was it by the same officer? No. It was by another officer? Yes. Okay, and uh, uh, this time you were standing, you said? Yes. Okay. Uh, the first time you were sitting? Yes. When you were photographed? The second time you were photographed, you were standing? Yes. Okay. And uh, the, the officer who took the second set of photos, what was he wearing? He was uh, uniformed. In a uniform. Okay. Um, and uh, was he the individual who took you out of the cell? Yes. Okay. And then my understanding is you returned to the cell? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then at some point, you also turned over your clothing? Yes. Okay. Uh, when did that happen? That happened at the very beginning when I got when I was uh, brought to the police station. Okay. All right. That happened uh, at the very beginning. So, uh, at what point was it? That was initially before I was uh, put into my cell. I was in some other uh, holding room. Right. Uh, that just had some chair there. At that point, I had all my clothes uh, taken off. Um, just to be seized as evidence. Okay. And and then then I was given my underwear back, I put it back on, and then I was given an orange jumpsuit, and then two minutes later I I was taken out of the orange jumpsuit and then I was given this uh, white bodysuit. Okay. And that was before you went into the cell? Correct. Okay. And uh, so let's talk about that for a minute. So when they took your clothes off, uh, you were put in a room, you said? Correct. Okay. And um, uh, did the officers explain to you why they were taking your clothes? Uh, as evidence. As evidence, okay. And uh, Also just because uh, of concerns that, I'm, that I might have something within the clothes. Okay, so you were, you, we call that a level three search. Yeah, actually now that you mention it, I remember that exact term being used. A level, level three, three search, search. Yeah. yeah. So we, we, we do that in cases where we're dealing with individuals that we don't know, because we don't know you, um, who are involved in relatively serious events, which unfortunately you are. Um, and so we do it for uh, our safety, as well as your safety, as well as to ensure that we're collecting, you know, all the evidence we possibly can, right? Because the idea at the end of the day is we, we just we want to come to the truth as to what's going on. That's that's the bottom line, right? So we have to do these things, and sometimes they're intrusive, 
but uh, we try to do it in a manner that uh, is as um, dignified as possible. So, uh, when you when you had your clothes taken off, uh, were you completely naked? I was only completely naked for about 10 seconds. Okay, all right. And uh, did you have some privacy in this room? That you were this room? No, the room you had, they, they, they took your clothes off. Actually, to be honest, I don't remember. I think there may have been some officers there. Okay. Were there? Because my, my, my uh, face was towards the wall the entire time. Okay, all right. How many officers were there? I think about four. Oh, four. I don't remember the exact number, to be honest. Okay. Were there any female officers? I don't believe so. Okay, all right. Was anything being videotaped? I don't remember seeing a uh, camera in that room. Okay, all right, okay. Um, uh, but nevertheless, you were only uh, completely naked for about 10 seconds. Correct. Okay, and then they gave you an, a, an orange jumpsuit? Yes. Okay. And then you were uh, then you were brought to the cells, you spoke to a lawyer, you photographed... Well, twice. actually, um, I was uh, switched into this uh, white bodysuit before being taken into my oh. uh, a cell. Because I was only in that orange jumpsuit for about two minutes. Oh, okay, okay. And uh, the reason behind putting you into a white jumpsuit, did they tell you? I believe if they did tell me, I don't remember the reason. Okay, okay. Um... The, the reason would have been to keep your, your feet protected, right? Because I don't think you had uh, you had the, the, the boots on the orange jumpsuit. Oh, yeah, I remember they said something about the, that there wasn't any footwear. Right, right, okay. Uh, okay, so from there, you, you went into the white jumpsuit, then you were put placed in the cells, you spoke to your lawyer? Yes. And then you were uh, photographed twice? Correct. Okay. Uh, in addition, the officer came down to advise you that uh, you'd be charged with nine counts of first-degree murder, right? Yes. Okay, and my understanding is, uh, I believe it was the same officer, at some point in time, he then came down to advise you that you were going to now be charged with 10 counts of first-degree murder and 15 counts of attempted murder. Correct. Okay, and during the sequence of events, at what point did that officer come down and tell you that? The upgraded charge was uh, after I uh, spoke to the uh, my lawyer. Okay. How many times did you speak to a lawyer? Once. Okay. So it would have come after the, the, the first time you spoke to the lawyer. It would have come after the, 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 the officers telling you you were being upgraded, the counts would be upgraded to nine counts of murder. So it would have been, it would have been, uh, um, it would have been some time after you spoke to your lawyer that they told you that uh, you, you were now being charged with 10 counts of murder, first degree murder and 15 counts of attempt murder, correct? Correct. Okay. Did the officers explain to you again uh, the the uh, your rights as far as calling a lawyer? Yes. Okay. And what did you say to them in response to that? I simply said okay. 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 And anything else? Uh, no. My understanding is the officers asked you, uh, do you wish to call a lawyer? Uh, yes, they did. Okay. Uh, the, so the second time I said no thanks, and the reason, I, as I said before, the reason I gave that answer was just because I had very recently spoken to a lawyer, so I thought that I wouldn't be given any additional information at that point. Okay, all right, okay. All right, well, um, here, here's here's what I'm telling you here today. It's important you understand what I'm saying, okay? Um, you're going to be charged with 10 counts of first-degree murder, okay, uh, as well as 15 counts of attempted murder. Um, I've read you your rights to counsel, your caution, secondary caution, so forth. Uh, do you wish to speak to a lawyer? The choice is yours. Yes, I will speak to a lawyer. You want to speak to a lawyer? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, did you have a lawyer, or did you want to speak to duty counsel? I'd like to speak to duty counsel, please. Okay, yeah, no problem. So can you just hold on? Just Can you sit tight for one second? I'm just going to just exit the room here for one minute. Okay. Um, if you just sit tight, I'll be right back, and then I'll take you down, and we can do that.
is just an audio recorder here. I'm just going to take this with me, okay? Uh -huh. uh, I'm not going to have any trouble with you, right? No. You promised me that? Yes. Okay. I appreciate that. Now I'm just going to take you down the hall. We'll just put you in a room. Okay. And uh, they're on there. They make a phone call. Okay, yeah, Alex has been placed in the major crime unit number one. I'm going to call duty council. Phone call has been made to duty council, and uh, we're just waiting for a call back. Before we go any further, just tell me what happened from the time we left this room until the time we came back. What took place? My lawyer told me not to answer. Okay. Uh, I understand that. Okay. And, and I'm glad you told me that. Um, you know why? Because that, that tells me you understand what your rights are. Okay. Um, but I need, you need to understand something. Okay. Um, we, the police, have a, have a job to do, okay? And, and that job includes uh, collecting uh, evidence, speaking to people, um, trying to understand and uncover what's happened, what took place, uh, and asking questions. And uh, we're obligated to, to, to sit down and, and speak to people like yourself who are in, your, in this position and ask you questions, all right? Uh, your lawyer's right, you don't have to answer any questions, okay? But you need to understand something, Alec, okay? Um, I still have to ask you questions, okay? Uh, and I'm going to ask you questions, all right? Uh, and I'm going to talk, okay? And it's not, I'm not, I'm not doing that to, to, to make you feel intimidated or to, to make you scared or to say things that you don't want to hear, okay? But the bottom line is um, we have a very difficult job to do, okay? And, and this is a very, very important matter that we're, we're dealing with here today, all right? So uh, I'm going to ask you questions. Uh, if you don't want to answer them, you can tell me you don't want to answer them. Uh, or you don't have to say anything at all. I, I totally understand that. But as long as we can still maintain that respect that we talked about at the beginning, is that cool? Yes. Is that cool? You're not going to offend me, okay? Um, uh, you're, you're not going to make me upset or, or, or insult me if you say, Rob, I don't want to answer that question, okay? Uh, if you're kicking over the table and screaming, well, that, that's going to that's gonna cause a problem, okay? But I'm not going to be offended, okay? And I understand, okay? But you also need to understand that I, I, have, I have a job to do, and I have to ask questions, okay? Um, if you don't want to tell me what we did from the time we left, the time we came back, um, is it fair to say that uh, while we were out, you spoke to a lawyer? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to suggest that um, the only person you had any contact with was, was, was with me. Is that right? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, I, I you, you didn't speak to any other police officers. Correct. Right. So I'm the only police officer uh, that was in your custody from the time we left this room until the time we came back. Uh, I took you down the hall to a room, placed you into a, a, a small room with a, a seat. Uh, we, I made a phone call, or I had uh, an officer make a phone call to duty council. Um, we originally uh, placed uh, one call. We had to wait. We couldn't hear. Uh, we didn't. We didn't hear back. So we placed a second call. We still didn't hear back. I came in and I actually opened the door and I informed you that we were still waiting to call. Do you remember that? Yes. Okay. Um, I think I asked you if you wanted to pour the washroom as well. Do you remember that? I remember. Yeah, and you said, uh, what did you say? I don't recall. Uh, you said you didn't need to borrow the washroom. Oh, 
Now I remember that. Okay, all right. And then finally, we got duty counsel on the line. Uh, uh, we put the, uh, the counsel, the, the lawyer, uh, uh, we handed the, the phone over to you. Uh, my understanding is his name was uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Did he tell you what his name was? I uh, don't recall his name. Okay, he identified himself as Mr. Rodriguez to me. I don't want you to tell me the conversation you had. Uh, it's what we call private. But I, I, I want to ask you, did you understand the conversation that you had with Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Do you understand what he said to you? Yes. Are you satisfied with the information that he's provided you? Yes. Okay, great. Um, and then from there, uh, you had a lengthy conversation. Uh, I only know that because uh, from the time I handed you the phone until the time you knocked on the door, it was quite some time. I'm guessing it was over 10 minutes? At yes. Least, at least over 10 minutes, yeah. And then uh, I uh, came to the door and uh, uh, I asked you if things were okay. You knocked on the door, so I opened it. You told me that you'd finished your conversation with a lawyer. I asked you if, uh, how you feeling, uh, if things were okay. You said yes. I asked if you wanted to borrow the washroom again. Remember that? Yes. And you said no. And then we walked back right, right in here. Is that right? Yes. And did anybody else talk to you? No. Did you talk to anybody else? No. Is there anything I'm missing? No. That's pretty pretty straightforward, eh? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, uh, so my understanding is uh, that's that's essentially what took place from the time you were arrested right up until the time you were brought into this room. We've covered off basically everything, haven't we? Yes. Okay. Did I miss anything? No. Anything of importance? Um, if I'm not mistaken, the officers uh, fed you, is that right? Yes. Uh, downstairs in the cells? Yes. What did they feed you? Sandwich and juice. A sandwich and a juice, okay. It was, uh, what was that? I didn't have uh, access to the time at the, the time I was uh, fed. Okay. Uh, are you hungry? No. Okay. Did you have anything else to eat today? I ate before uh, I was arrested. Okay. And, and, and what uh, what time was that? I don't recall. Okay. Do you remember what you ate? I don't recall. Okay. All right. Uh, if, if you're hungry at all, at any point in time, you just let me know. Oh. Okay. If you need to borrow the washroom, you just let me know. Okay. I'm going to leave that up to you to tell me. Okay. Because I'm not going to know if you're hungry or not. I'm not going to know if you need to go to the washroom. So I'm going to rely on you to tell me that. Is that cool? Yes. All right. Um, how much sleep did you have last night? About eight hours. About eight hours. And how, how did you sleep? I slept well. You slept well. And when, where, where did you sleep? Was it your home? I uh, I do not wish to answer that. Okay. All right. Uh, nevertheless, you slept well. Okay. Um, I want to ask you something, Alec, and this is important. Uh, are you on any kind of medication right now? No. Okay. So do you take any, what I mean by medication, do you take anything, anything prescribed for any physical injuries or ailments of any type? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. Uh, what about medication for psychological issues? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. Um, has a doctor, uh, um, have you seen a doctor uh, recently with respect to any medical issues that I should be concerned about? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. What about psychological issues? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. Alec, can I ask you this? Um, because it's important. And, and I'm saying this because um, I think I know the answer. But uh, am I wrong to understand that uh, in high school you were uh, identified as someone with special needs? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. But you did go to Thornley Secondary, didn't you? Correct. Yeah, okay. And you graduated from Thornley, is that right? Yes. Okay. And then following that, my understanding is you went to Seneca. Correct. And you were, um, uh, you're just finishing up, if I'm not mistaken. You're just finishing up your, your, your course. Yes. Yeah, and that's uh, uh, the Center for Development of Open Technology, CDOT. No, it's uh, Seneca at York. Yeah, I realize that, but your program, the program you're taking, isn't it called Center for... Uh, no, that was uh, actually something else. Oh, okay. All right. What are you taking, what are you taking at Seneca? Bachelor of uh, Software Development Program. Oh, 
Oh, so you're taking a degree? Yes. So Seneca offers a degree in, in software programming? Yes. And, and that's something that you uh, were aspiring to do? I understand you wanted to, to become a, uh, a software developer or designer? Or so, software developer, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a team leader, is that not right? Yes. Is that the, that's, that's, that's what you were aspiring to, 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 to do? Yes. Okay. And um, as far as work, uh, my understanding is you're not working right now. I don't wish to answer that. Okay. All right. Um, is it fair to say that you, you, you had some employment lined up with a company called Seridan? Seridan Computers? I don't wish to answer that. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I, 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 I do know that you live at home, though, and I do know that you have a, a mom and a dad, right? Um, I believe your dad, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, I, I probably, I'm not pronouncing it right, but his name is uh, Vahi? Vahi? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. Um, and your mom's Sona, and you got a, an older brother named Haig, and uh, I think he's, what, probably 28, if I'm not mistaken? Haig? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. Right. How is uh, how are things at home? Good. Uh, with you and your family? You, you, yes. Are you close to your mom and dad? Yes. Yeah? yeah. And what about your relationship with your brother? It's good. Good. Um, I understand you were born in Canada. Yes. Yeah. And your uh, your parents immigrated to Canada um, some time ago, um, and they're originally from Iraq. Is that right? I do not wish to uh, confirm or deny that. Okay. All right. Okay. I just say that because um, we've spoken to your dad, and uh, um, he's worried about you. I'll tell you that. Okay. Um, and I ask you these questions, and, and I'm not trying to intimidate. I'm not trying to scare you. Okay. Um, the reason why I ask these questions is because it's important that I get to know you better. All right. Um, we just met for the very first time, and uh, you don't know me. Am I right? Correct. Right. And uh, uh, I, I've never met you before, but I, know, I do know a great, a great deal about you. And um, it's important I get to know you better. And the reason why I say that is because um, well, this is an important issue that, that, that brings you here today. Okay? It's very serious. And um, I think I would be neglectful if I didn't at least try and understand who you are. That's all I'm trying to do. Do you understand? Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Do you feel intimidated right now? Are you scared or anything like that? No. Okay. Uh, will you let me know if, 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 you, if that ever happens? I will let you know. Okay. All right. If there's anything I say that is you know, is offensive, or that you find offensive, or if, you know, if there's anything I say that you don't like, will you let me know? Yes. Okay. Uh, the reason why I say that because I don't want to offend. That's not why I'm here. Okay. Um, I do know this. My understanding is um, you were in a, a, a special needs class in, in high school. Okay. Uh, it was a small uh, classroom. Uh, specifically designed for uh, people with um, special needs. Um, my understanding is uh, that there were a number of students in that class who excelled very well in certain areas uh, and didn't do uh, very well or, or were, uh, were um, they, they performed poorly in other areas. So there were, you know, it, there was a, a mixture of individuals in the class and, um, and uh, the idea behind being placed in the special needs class was to focus on, on the areas where they, they didn't perform as well. Um, and uh, in, my, in my conversation with you, in my experience with, uh, with, with people with special needs, because uh, I've been doing this a long time, and I have actually family members who uh, you know, have uh, you know, special needs uh, because of a variety of different reasons. Um, I can recognize uh, uh, people who, um, you know, who, uh, who have special needs. And uh, so I, the reason why I'm saying that is because I want to make sure you understand what I'm saying, okay? Um, 
I don't want to be saying something that is going to confuse you or make you feel uncomfortable uh, or, or make you feel scared. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, now, my understanding is your dad's not working. He used to work for Rogers, but he's 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 he's, he's, out, he's out of work right now. But he's 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 looking for he's looking for work. Uh, is that right? I uh, do not wish to confirm or deny that. Okay. Uh, your mom works for uh, CompuGen. That's a computer computer company. Is that I uh, do not wish to answer that. Okay. All right. Are you are you in any kind of relationship right now with um, with a, with a, an intimate partner? I mean, do you have a girlfriend or a? I do not wish to answer that. You know. Okay. All right. Um, what about friends? Do you have a, a, a group of friends that you typically hang around with? I do not wish to answer that. You don't wish to answer that. If I was to say uh, Jeffrey Wan, would you know who I'm talking about? I don't recall that name. Jeffrey Wan, W A N. I don't recall. You don't. Okay. What about uh, uh, Brendan Le uh, uh, Levine? I don't recall. Okay. All right. Um, do you know a, a fellow by the name of um, Michael White? I don't know which to answer that. Okay. All right. Okay. What about uh, Michael uh, 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 Tranzer? Sorry. Yeah, Tanzer. Michael Tanzer. Do you know Michael Tanzer? I don't wish to answer that. You know. Okay. Do you have a Facebook account? Yes. You do. Way. Yeah. Um, is it? Am I correct to? to to suggest that the, the name of your account, your account profile is your name? What I will say that it is uh, correct to assume that most people have a Facebook account with the same name as their uh, real name. Right, right, right. And um, do you have any other online social media accounts? That is my uh, only online social media account. Okay, so you know what I mean by social media? I'm talking about like Facebook, uh, Twitter, etc. Yeah, Instagram, um, Snapchat. Um, uh, what are some of the other ones? I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm, I'm old. I'm 50, 51 years old, so I, I can't. You, you young guys have. Yeah, we know all the all the all the uh, the uh, the uh, the, uh, the different technological ways of communicating. What are the what are the other ones? Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm just thinking about my kids use. Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. yeah okay. I knew that one. Uh, Snapchat. FaceTime. FaceTime. Do you need an account for that? I've actually never used that before. FaceTime. It's like uh, FaceTime is like Skype, though, isn't it? I think it's easier, m a more convenient w uh, way of using Skype. Right. Basically. Because you communicate over Facebook, but it's a uh, it's a video form of communication, correct? I actually didn't know that. Oh, because I've, I've, I've just heard of the name. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I've actually used it, but this is going to sound strange. I've used it, but I don't know how I've used it. People have actually called me on FaceTime, and I've been on my, uh, my um, I have a little iPad, and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm talking to somebody, and I can see them, and they can see me. So I, uh, One day you're going to get old, and you're going to realize what I'm going through right now, because it's hard. It's hard as a, as a 51-year-old guy to try and keep up with the technology, and by the time you get up to my age, Technology is going to be out of control, but you're a, you're a bit of a computer guy. You like computers, eh? You're, you're into software yeah. programming, all that kind of stuff. Have you got a particular um, area of expertise? Like, do you, do you do you write code, or what do you do? I don't wish to answer that. You don't wish to tell me what you what you like to do and what you don't like to do, as far as. Uh, no, I don't. Sure. What, what okay? Well, what, going back to the uh, social media accounts, do you? I mean, my understanding is you have a um, a LinkedIn account. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But you're not you're not you're not active on LinkedIn. Do you know what I mean by I I, d I don't uh, sign in uh, daily. Right. 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 And the information you have on LinkedIn's fairly limited. Yes. Yeah. 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 And uh, my understanding is your Facebook account is your your activity on Facebook is kind of sporadic. Sometimes you're on and then you go off and then you go back on. And 
close down your account and you, then you open it back up. Why, why, why is that? I don't wish to answer that. Am I right to, to assume that you've closed your Facebook get down, account down in the past? I may have done it once. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right. When did you, when did you close it down? Did you say when or what? No, when. When? I don't remember. It was quite a while ago. Oh, okay. And how long was it closed down for? I would say at least a year. Oh, okay. Okay. And then uh, am I right to assume that you just recently opened it back up again? Yes. Yeah, okay. And when, 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 when did you open it back up? I think about a month or two ago. About, about a month or two ago. Okay. And um, how many friends do you have on Facebook? I don't remember the exact count. Okay. Are you active on Facebook? My uh, my rate of uh, signing is inconsistent. Sometimes I might sign in for a couple of days, but then might not sign in again for another week or so. Okay. Is there a reason for that? I just don't have a specific uh, pattern when uh, deciding to use Facebook. You know, I, I'm just thinking in terms of a routine. Like when I when I I actually use Facebook a lot. I'm surprised. Being as old as I am, um, but one of the reasons why I use Facebook is because it keeps me. I don't post a lot of stuff on Facebook um, because I'm not that time. I'm, I'm kind of shy that way. I don't like to to tell people what I'm doing, um, but I like looking at what other people are doing. And uh, I have uh, I don't have a lot of friends, but I have a few, and I and I kind of keep up to date with what they're doing, and I watch and I I look, and so as a kind of a, as a routine, I will I will. I don't want to say daily. Maybe daily. I go onto my Facebook and I check, and uh, but I don't post a great deal of information. I, I, for some reason, I don't know. In my mind, I just don't like to to reveal what I'm doing. Are you? When you say you're on Facebook, are, are you, what do you mean by that? I simply mean that I'm occasionally uh, signing in to uh, use it minimally. Okay. So when you say using, is that are you posting stuff on on your web? On it your could profile? be posting, or it could be a private messaging, uh, an, another individual on Facebook. Oh, I see. Okay. And what kind of stuff do you typically post on your Facebook? There is no specific pattern as to the type of content I post. No. It's just random stuff, depending on whatever you're thinking of the day, or. It, you could think of it like that. Mm -hmm. And messaging, are you what, you know, what kind of conversations are you typically having on, on messaging? I don't wish to answer that. Oh, okay. All right. Um, am I to understand that you've you've had some military experience in the past? Yes. Yeah. Man. Okay. Was it in, the, in Canada? I'm, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, my dad was in the military. My dad was actually in the Navy. He um, he joined when he was 17 years old. And in fact, he was he wasn't 18, so he, had, he actually had to have his parents sign off to uh, to uh, to give him permission to join the navy. But, uh, so in the military, we have the air force, the the navy, and the and the army. Which 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 one were you part of? Army. In the army. Okay. All right. And where did you join? Here in Toronto. Yes. Oh, really? And what made you decide to do that? Uh, I wanted to uh, try something new. I wanted to see what it was like to uh, join infantry. Really? Really? Have you, have you thought about pursuing the military as a career? I had thought of it at the time that I had uh, joined. Right, 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 right. Okay. And, and were you thinking about doing, like, enlisting, or were you thinking about being an officer and going through the, the officer cadet program? Or what, what I had it? enlisted. You enlisted. Oh, I see. So it was in the Army, and what particular, like, were you, what particular, I know there's a number of different the professions or a number of different trades. Trades, yes. Yeah. So what particular? I was uh, in? infantry. Oh, infantry. So you'd be, if if called to task, you'd be the fellow on the front line. Yes. Charging to the enemy and. Yes. Just uh, get your hands dirty at yeah. the pointy end of the stick. <laughs> okay. Is that? Uh, is is it? Yeah, uh, as per the trade description. Oh, okay. Right on. Right on. What? So specifically, what? So within the infantry, did you have a particular skill that you wanted to develop, or? Was it just? I was interested in uh, learning how to uh, use uh, weapons, Beautiful. Spe okay. specifically uh, large guns. So large guns is in in what like uh, like such as uh, assault rifles. Oh, okay. So you're not talking about howitzers and 
and uh, cannons, right? You're talking about. Like, oh. Yeah, because those you can actually hold in your hand. Right, right. So what type of weapons would the uh, the military, the Canadian military, be be training their their members in? Because you know what, I play a lot of Call of Duty. Right? Have you ever played Call of Duty? Unfortunately, that game isn't realistic. Oh. Um, <laughs> however, uh, I never. Unfortunately, I never made it far enough in my basic training to uh, use guns. Uh, so I don't know what type of guns the uh, uh, military uses. Oh, okay. What makes you think? You know, I thought uh, Call of Duty was real. Well, I know that the scenarios aren't realistic, but totally like the weapons they use are realistic, aren't they? And uh, and the camo and the, and the uniforms and stuff. Like that, Unfortunately, uh, um, the the logistics of how the uh, weapons are fired right. uh, are not uh, are realistic in real life. For oh. example, uh, there's a lot of recoil when firing a, uh, an ass assault rifle. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I imagine, and you're not getting much recoil on your, you know, your your computer, whatever. Definitely the, the not. Little, the little handheld console you're using, of course, it vibrates a little bit. But that <laughs> yeah, do you play uh, Call of Duty? I played it uh, in the past. Yeah, I enjoy that. I like that. And uh, there's another one I, I really enjoy was um, um, Honor, Badge of Honor. I've ever, actually never played that, to be honest. That was actually better. That's better than the Call of Duty. Better, Badge of Honor. It's made, it's, uh, I think Call of Duty is is uh, Microsoft, if I'm not mistaken. I, can't, I, I don't know. And, but this was another company. But it, Call it, of Duty is made by Activision. Activision. Okay, right. Uh, and now, yeah, so Badge of Honor is something else. It's, it's another company. I don't know what it is, but uh, do, you, do, you, do you find yourself playing, do you play a lot of, a lot of video games? A guy like you, 25 years old, imagine you're... Yeah, I actually, I actually like playing video games, especially the uh, violent ones. The violent ones, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just like to... Uh, let out all my urges that's, into the that's, TV screen. That's why they're there, right? Do you, what about uh, what other ones do you play? I played Halo a lot in the yeah. past. Okay, all right. That's more of a sci-fi kind of futuristic stuff. It's not. I wouldn't say Halo is terribly violent. I mean, you're, you're killing Martians and things like that. At least you're not killing other humans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you play um, uh, Grand Theft Auto? I played it a couple of times. Uh, uh, on someone else's Xbox. I don't actually own, I've never actually owned any copies of Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. So as far as being a gamer, how would you classify yourself? Are you uh, like a I big gamer? I would classify gamer? myself as a hardcore gamer. Hardcore gamer. So in terms of hours spent during the day playing video games, how often would you, how many hours would you spend? I would say an average of uh, five hours per day. Oh, okay, all right, okay. And that's, that seems reasonable. That's like your age, I'd probably do the same even thing. Given, even given my course loads. Okay, and so that's with school. Yes. So okay, so and you were full time. Yes. Yeah, and then you're in a computer degree yes. program, right? Which is, I imagine, intense. Yes. Like hard work. Yes. Right? Have you always been? I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this because I've got a, uh, I've got a nephew of mine who's actually uh, in uh, BC right now at the University of Victoria, and he's in a uh, uh, computer engineering program. So I don't know if computer engineering is the same or not. There's an overlap, but it's not the same thing as computer programming. It's not okay, okay. Um, but his course load is intense, and it's 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 highly uh, uh, mathematical. A lot of math involved, a lot of equations, a lot of problem solving. I never actually had to do that much math in really? my program. It was mostly a uh, coding. Coding. Oh, so you write a lot of code. Yes. Now, do you write uh, what uh, what type of language do you write? I've used uh, C, C++, C, C++, Java. And Java would be web-based? Java's not really for, for writing no, code? No. Uh, uh, for websites? Java is more generic. Yeah, okay. But C++ is the is the, the more popular coding for computer programs. Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. And uh, how, what made you decide to get interested in that? Well, I was kind of a, a nerd in high school, and so, I so uh, took... I. <laughs> and I took a, a course uh, on uh, computer programming. In, uh, I took one course that was programming in high school, and after that, I decided I really liked coding, and I wanted to uh, uh, sign up for a um, programming a program in uh, college. Really? And then you just carried it through, and you got into Seneca, and, and yes. things were good. Now, was it difficult getting into Seneca? Did you obviously had to I, I had to. The only difficult part was ensuring that I had high grades right, at near right, the end right. of high school. Right, 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 right. So did you finish grade 12, or did you go on to grade 13? I'm trying to think. 
I finished grade 12. Okay, they didn't have grade 13 when you... When no, they've already, they already discontinued that long uh, before that's I started high school. That's what I thought, yeah, that's what I thought. Because when I, when I first, I'm from BC, I grew up out west in Victoria. I don't know if you, have you ever traveled the, the country? I've never uh, been to uh, BC before. Never been to BC. Have you been anywhere else in, in Canada? I've been to uh, Quebec. You've been to Quebec to, to visit? Yes. Okay, but have you been, you have you traveled anywhere else? No. Okay. Well, yeah, BC is, uh, in BC, uh, well, no, this is back in 1984 when I graduated, uh, and it's still to this day, they only have grade 12. But when I moved out here when I was 19, 20 years old, they had, is it what they, they call it, OAC? They could hold a, which was a grade 13, which was like a, a university prep year. So if you were going to go on to university or college, you'd take uh, grade 13. But then they discontinued that. But I can't remember, I can't remember exactly when they did that. So I assume that maybe perhaps you were still part of that. So you you get into Seneca, and it's a how, how many, is it a two-year program? Four-year program. Four. So were you in your fourth year? The, the, this semester was supposed to be my final semester. Final semester? Yes. And you'd be graduating with a Bachelor of Science? Bachelor of Software Development. Bach, bachelor of Software Development. Did you have, did you have tests or anything to complete? Or? I already completed everything. <coughs> so you, you basically, you, f you finished? Yes. So what was your last day? When My last day of classes was uh, last Wednesday. Last Wednesday. And so when would your, when would you, when would you be told that you would, you would you, you had graduated. Like when would your graduation day be? I would have uh, found out my uh, final grades this Saturday. This Saturday? Yes. Okay. So were you required to do anything between now and Saturday? No. So that's it? You're finished? Yes. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Good for you. And that's No, that's quite an achievement. Yeah, you got a, uh, a Bachelor of Science. That's a heck of a lot more than what I got, I'll tell you that. I went to university and I, I, only, I only took, uh, well, I got a diploma in business administration, then I did two years in uh, taking finance but I never completed it, I never finished my university. I wish I had, but I just, it was, it was a lot of work, I couldn't do it, it was, uh, it was too much. Well, that's good, wow, that's uh, that's quite an achievement. Have you, um, so, but you hadn't lined anything up as far as a job? Like work I don't wish to answer that. You, okay, all right, okay, I understand, I understand. Um, my understanding is you're living at home. You don't live on your own. Am I right? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. Uh, but you have a good relationship with your mom and dad? Yes. Yeah. And has your relationship always been good with your mom and dad? Yes. Okay. And have they been supportive and loving throughout your life? Yes. And um, were there any difficulties in your life growing up with your mom and dad? No. No. Uh, what about with school? Were there difficulties with, uh, with, with school growing up? No. No? Uh, and so when I talk about that, I'm talking about like the school curriculum, you know, the you know, going to school, learning, and 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 uh, you know, completing your assignments and things like that. Were there any issues? No. Okay. What about the students? Uh, no, I never had any issues. Never had any issue with any of the students or anything no. like that. No. Um, uh, and, I, and I say this uh, because you know sometimes these things are important. Uh, were you? Um, how were you treated by the other students? I was treated well. You treated well, okay. Um, did you have any difficulties with any particular group of students? No. No. Uh, what about difficulties with uh, uh, girls in particular? No. No, no. no difficulties with girls at all? No. No, not at all. How do you feel about uh, girls in general? I am attracted to them. Oh, you are? Okay, okay. So you're heterosexual? Yes. Would it be fair to say that? Okay, that's that's important. Um, have you ever had a relationship with a with a, a female? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. All right. Um, in terms of females, I mean females and women, because you're 25, you're a young man, right? We'll call them women. Um, in terms of your feelings towards women in general, uh, how would you describe that? I would say that sometimes I am a bit upset that they choose to uh, date uh, obnoxious men instead of uh, uh, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. 
so I, 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 um, I have a, um, well, I got involved in this issue, I'll talk about it later, but um, I, I um, so y my understanding is um, y you have some problems with women who date obnoxious men. Right? Yes. And these guys, I'm thinking you're, t you're talking about the fellows who are loud, uh, uh, arrogant, um, uh, generally uh, uh, outgoing and popular with girls. Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. Um, and you have a problem with the women that date these fellows? Yes. Why is it that you have a problem with, with the women? Because I feel that uh, it's illogical to be uh, dating such men when they could be dating uh, gentlemen instead. Right, right, right. That makes sense. I mean, uh, and I've seen that because I've grown up. And I'll tell you one of the issues that I had as a kid growing up because I was, uh, this is going to say, you might not believe me, but believe, I, was, I wasn't a very big kid growing up. I was actually very, very small. Uh, and it took me a long time to, 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 to grow. And uh, so as a result, uh, the, I, you know, I, I was kind of ostracized. You know what I mean by ostracized? I was kind of cast aside. Cast aside, yeah, yeah. And, uh, or uh, I left out, like I wouldn't get picked for teams, you know, or anything like that. You know, I was kind of the last guy. Yeah, you ever see those, uh, those uh, you know, those television shows where, you know, all the kids are lined up and they're getting picked for, you know, the teams and there's always one guy left out at the end? Yeah. That, that was me. I was, that was, I was that guy. And, uh, and, and I never, I was never uh, very popular with uh, women, girls in, in, in school. And, uh, and that kind of actually went on through uh, to early part of my, my, my adulthood uh, until I started, you know, getting taller and uh, mature, right? But uh, I understand exactly what you meant because I was, as a kid growing up, I was, um, you know, I mean, I was like any other kid, any other young man, right? You would look at uh, uh, attractive girls and I knew I was probably just as smart, if not smarter than some of the clowns they were dating. But because for whatever reason I didn't have what it took, they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't date me. Because I think because I was short, they wouldn't date me, and they'd end up dating, you know, the tall jocks and the other, you know, the good-looking fellows. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Then yeah. Then you kind of resent these girls, right? Yeah. Because you know that's kind of a superficial way of uh, deciding, you know, who it is. Because you're height date. is an unfair. You can't control your height. Right. Exactly. Right. 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 What other things can't you control? You can't control uh, your looks either. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. Although you're not a bad looking guy. Thank you. No, you are. You're a good looking guy. I mean, you keep yourself well. And you're good, you're fit. You know, you're tall. Yeah. Um, what other things can't you control? I'm unaware. I'm, I'm not aware of anything else you can't control. Uh, what about. Um, like phys physical disabilities, right? Obviously, if you were blind, or you know, unfortunately, you, you can't control that. Yeah, you can't control that. That's what I mean. So these are things you can't control, or um, you know, other disabilities. You know, uh, if you're mentally handicapped, or if you uh, you you know you're you have an amputee, or uh, uh, you know, there's there's other other things. And I and I and so so does that would would you include that in those those issues that you can't control? Yes. And so uh, so how long have you had this? Um, this feeling towards uh, women who are attracted to, you know, this particular type of guy? Ever since I uh, started uh, college. Ever since you started college, okay. Have, have, did it, did it, was, it, was it something that occurred as a result of a single incident? Like, did, did, was there one particular moment in your life where it sort of struck home, this was a problem, or was it just a... Uh, on uh, Halloween of uh, 2013, I was attending a, a house party, mm -hmm. and I uh, walked in and attempted to uh, socialize with some uh, girls. Uh, however, they all uh, laughed at me and uh, held the arms of the uh, big guys instead. Really? Yeah. Well, that's kind of rude. And how did that make you feel? I felt uh, very angry yeah. that they would, because I considered myself a supreme gentleman, I right. was angry th that they would um, give their love and affection to obnoxious brutes. Really, really. 
And so it was at that particular moment, and that was sort of the defining moment that made you think that, you know, this is this is wrong, and you know, these people are, uh, yes, are unfairly treating you in, in, in the way that they were. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that makes sense. I appreciate you talking about that. That uh, that says a lot. And um, so uh, so from that point on, what, uh, what 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 did you start doing? I uh, started thinking that it's unfair that um, a s certain uh, guys will not get any uh, love and affection from girls. Okay. And, and what, what, like, what, what, what do you mean by certain guys? Such as me, that are, uh, that are very uh, nice and uh, act gentlemanly. Right, right, right. Are there other guys? Did you find other guys uh, are in the same? There, I know of several other guys over the internet who uh, feel the same way, but I know they are, I would consider them uh, too cowardly to uh, act on their anger. Oh, okay, and so on the internet, what, where, where, what are you talking about in terms of? Uh, specifically, uh, certain boards on uh, 4chan. Oh, okay, 4chan, I'm familiar with 4chan. So that's... Uh, Such as R9K and uh, Pool. Okay, so describe 4chan to me. What is, what, what, what is 4chan specifically? It's an image board uh, right. where uh, people uh, can anonymously make any post they want. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the three boards that I have uh, uh, frequented are uh, B, which is the random board. Okay. Yeah. P O L or poll right. stands for politically uh, incorrect. Okay. And uh, R nine K, which uh, is basically means R nine thousand. It's uh, in effect they're saying we're all robots. Anyone who uh, messages on that uh, board. Okay, so those are the three boards that you you you, you go to. Yes. To to uh, is it fair to say you chat? Yes. You chat. So you chat with other similar-minded people. Yes. Right. So 4chan is a website, and within 4chan there are these messaging boards. Yes. And they're individual boards specific to like-minded people. Yes. And uh, how many boards would there be in total on 4chan? There are about uh, 50 different boards on 4chan, but uh, but most of them are actually. Uh, Unrelated to the uh, to B or nine cane or or pool, therefore I do, don't bother going on them. Right, right. Because they, because uh, in fact, if you try, if I try to talk about the topics that I was talking about on those other boards, my posts would get deleted. Oh, okay, all right. So there's moderators. Yes. Uh, who, who monitor the, the conversations and they, you know, they they kind of police the the conversations, and if you're not part of the group conversation, they they, they kick you out. Yes. Oh, okay, that, that makes sense. So, when did you first start going on the 4 Chan? Since uh, 2014. Oh, okay. All right. And how did you learn about 4chan? Uh, I was informed about it uh, by a friend at college. Oh, okay. All right. And did, was he on it as well? Or? Yes. Oh, okay. What's his name? I don't wish to okay. answer. Okay. I understand. But nevertheless, it's a it's a friend who's on 4chan. Was he in the same uh, Was he in the same uh, chat rooms? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. And so, you, would you have conversation with him in those chat rooms? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. And so, how many other people would be in the in these in these three particular chat rooms you talk about? It doesn't actually tell you how many are in there at once because it doesn't. It, as a software, it's not actually a chat room. It's more like a message board mm. where anyone can post at any time by simply going to the thread, okay. but they don't have to stay there. Oh, I see. So it's not live. It's not live chat. No, it's a it's a thread. So when you say it's a thread, it's a it's essentially like a forum. Right. So you make a statement, and then somebody will uh, answer, or they will reply to that s your statement. Correct. And then you've got. You know, or they might re reply to the original poster, or what is known as OP. Right. Okay. I see. Okay. Okay. And so the the the, the general content of these three forums. Is it, am I using the right word? Forum or, or ch image board? Image board. So the, 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 what what's the general uh, 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 the topic within these message boards? Well, on a B, the uh, or random, the general topic is random. It's literally any random uh, um, topic. Mm -hmm. On R9K, it's they uh, call us uh, space robots. 
Okay. Uh, the topic is usually uh, frustrations at an inability to lose one's virginity, specifically for young males. Okay. Uh, poll, which is politically incorrect, mm -hmm. is the general topic is basically political discussions with an alt-right bias. Political discussions with an alt-right, so you're, uh, you're, you're ultra-conservative. Or you're yes. the, oh, like a, you know in the American uh, definition, would be, you'd be an you know, ultra Republican. Yes. Okay. So you, what would your <coughs> what would your political views be in the alt right uh, uh, message board? I <coughs> actually don't have any uh, political views. I only uh, uh, the only reason I have talked with them was just because I enjoyed their uh, style of uh, conversation. Okay. And what was the style of conversation? Uh, it was very uh, blunt and honest. So when what would it be? What would it typically focus around, or what would the what would the, tip, the typical conversations contain? Uh, red pill truths about uh, why uh, women uh, choose to uh, date uh, obnoxious men. Date the Chads. Yeah. The Chads of this world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, the Stacys going for the Chads. Exactly. The Stacys are the yeah the you know the the, the dizzy dumb. Girls dating the the goofy you know jocks. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So you call them Stacys and Chads. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard that term before. Uh, and so that's in the alt right. Yes. That conversation takes place in the alt right as well. Yes. Uh, does do other things take place in the alt right? Uh, um, form or red uh, so, Some uh, some uh, um, alt right members consider them to be themselves to be uh, red pilled. What does that um, mean? Is that like a, a matrix? Uh, actually. It is, in fact, that term was actually, in fact, um, uh, came up as a reference to Matrix. Right. Taking the red, you can either take the red pill or you can take the blue pill. Right. And some of the some alt right members even consider them to be those to be a uh, black pill, which in, a sen in, a, in a essence means they're a MGTOW, men going their own way. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. You're right. Yep. Okay. So and so the so the conversations are surrounding. Uh, so in those three message boards, they're all basically this, or maybe in the, I shouldn't say all three, but in the two message boards, the alt right and the R9K. R9K. They're and we call ourselves uh, space robots. There. Space robots, but the conversations tend to be focused around um, uh, fellows who have uh, been un unable to lose their virginity due to the stasis of this world in the chats. Yes. Right. And uh, I, I've done a little bit of. Um, uh, reading and I know a little bit about um, involuntary uh, celibacy. Celibacy, right? So being celibate, involuntarily yes. celibate. What does that mean? That means, and celibacy means uh, uh, someone who never perform has a sexual intercourse. Right. Uh, involuntary celibacy means this wasn't your choice. You I see. essentially are uh, have been thrown into true forced loneliness, and you're unable to lose your virginity. Right. This is especially uh, painful for uh, young males. Right, right, right. That makes sense. And there's other are there not other websites that cater to this group of people as well? Forever Alone. Have you ever heard of them? I have heard of the uh, Forever Alone uh, subreddit. And subreddit, subreddit. Have you heard, you've heard of those? Okay. Yes. Okay. And would it, is it fair to say Forever Alone is a is a is a forum within subreddit? It is a subreddit. That's it, the, the definition of subreddit is uh, basically a section of Reddit. Right. 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 Yes. Exactly. Right. So it would be like the 4chan. That the kind of the, in a way. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do, are you on Forever Alone? Yes. You're on that as well. Yes. Okay. And what other what other sites are you on? I don't. I can't uh, recall other sites off the bat at the moment. What's your What's your username in uh, Forever Alone? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. Well, what about 4chan? There is no username because you're always anonymous. You don't register on 4chan. Well, and that's what makes 4chan popular. Yeah, because it makes it very easy, and you can uh, hide behind a computer screen. Right. 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 Okay. And so, when you're on the internet, where are you typically when you're when you're accessing these websites? Are you at home? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And have you got a computer at home? You obviously you do. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, do you ever access them with any other type of device? Yes, I have access to them uh, from school before, from mm -hmm. school computers. And then where, where's that at Seneca? Yes. And and what department? Um, in within the school library. Oh. That's common to all the students. Oh, I see. Do you have one particular computer that you go to? That 
I, I've always gone to the computer at the uh, northeast corner of the library, just as a, because I'm a person of habit. Right. Right. Okay. And uh, uh, is there a number on that computer or anything like that? No, but I'm always uh, gravitated to the exact same spot. Okay. I'm, I'm able to. I just instinctually know uh, this is exactly where I've always sat every time. Right, right, right. What type of computer is that? Uh, Windows 10. No, I mean in terms of the uh, the hardware. What is the make of the hardware? Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. I know it's a workstation. It's a workstation, so it's not a laptop. Correct. It's, it's like a, it's a, it's a box and a, and, a, and a flat screen? Correct. Okay. And it's at the northeast corner, you said? Northeast Correct. corner. So if if I was to walk into the library, uh, where where would the doors be to the front entrance of the library? They would be um, very uh, close to the um, southeast entrance of the uh, S building of Seneca at York. Okay, this and the S building contains the library. Yes. Okay, and uh, the southeast entrance. And then you'd walk then in. Then you then you would as soon as you enter you would turn left and then when you walk then you'll see the entrance to the library on the left hand side. Oh I see. Okay. Draw me a picture of what the library looks like. Have a seat there. Have a seat. The library? Yeah. Or where the computer is. That's essentially the, um, okay. the, the the main layout. So oh, so so uh, so I'm looking at this. That's north. You're t the top of the page is north, east, west, and south. Yes. Okay. And where's the entrance? The northeast corner is the entrance. Yes. And this and is then, and this uh, this is uh, around the corner where I um, you know, where, where I prefer to uh, sit when uh, using their uh, computers. Okay. Put put a circle or a square. How would you uh, show me where you where you're where the I would put it here. To be, it's not actually the very northeast corner because the actual northeast corner has a bunch of Macs. Uh, I'm I'm using the most northeast uh, Windows computer there. Okay, just put uh, put computer beside that. Right there. Okay. Um, can you do me a favor. Just sign the bottom there so I know that, that you, that's yours. So you're 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 kind of a fellow of of, of habit. You 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 you've got a, a routine. You stick to it. Yes. Okay. And the computer at home, where is that located? It's located in my room. Oh, okay. Oh, what type of computer is that? A Mac. Oh, so you but you do like so you own a Mac. Well, I'm 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 good with both Macs uh, and Windows. And Windows, yeah. But you prefer Windows or? Yeah. Really. But you have a Mac. I use it for development. Oh, so there's a difference in terms of the versatility of the different of the computers. Is that the, is that how it works? Or? Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. So for development, you like the Mac, but for surfing the web, you like the the Windows. Yes. Oh, okay, that makes sense. All right. And and your your Mac is it a uh, is it a laptop? Yes. Oh, okay. What what uh, what what version is it? I believe it's High Sierra, if I remember correctly. It's a high. I've never heard of the high Sierra. High Sierra. That's that's just the operating system name. No, I'm saying, is it like a, a MacBook Air or is it a MacBook? Uh, MacBook Pro. It's a MacBook Pro, so it's the thicker of the. Uh, yeah. Okay, so it's a, it's a. It's, it's about it's, it's about uh, three quarters of an yeah. inch or something. Okay. Well, what color is it? Uh, steel or gray color. Yeah. So they come in the standard. Eh? And whereabouts in your room is your is your is your laptop? On my desk. It's on your desk. You got a desk inside your room? Yes. Okay. How many bedrooms in your house? I don't wish to answer that. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, do you have your own? I bedroom? just, I just don't want to give up the uh, privacy of uh, anyone else living in the house. I totally understand that. I totally understand. That makes a lot of sense, and I appreciate you telling me that. You know what? Uh, that, that may, you know, and like I said, you know, if, if that's if that's the issue, you please let me know. Uh, can I ask you this? Do you have your own bedroom? 
Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so, uh, y y so when you're on 4chan, uh, what specifically are you and and you know 4chan when you're when you're on your different websites and Forever Alone? Which oh, let me ask you this. Sorry, I mean it, it sound confusing. Which are you more active on in terms 4chan. of 4chan? 4chan. Okay. Um, when did you first? Sorry. You mentioned this and I forgot. When did you first go on to 4chan? 2014. 2014. And specifically when? In 2014. May 23, uh, 2014. Uh, and how were you able to remember that? Because I remember that was a uh, very significant day. Okay. What, what day was? What was that? Uh, that was when uh, Elliot Roger uh, decided to essentially uh, commit an uprising, a beta uprising, if you will, right. against the uh, Chads and the Stacys. <laughs> okay, okay. And that was in the United States? Yes. And so when you talk well, about... Well, because um, incels don't believe in borders. Right, okay, okay. So w so locations are uh, irrelevant to us. Right, right. But for, for geographical reference only, am I right to understand it, it, it occurred in California? Yes. Okay. And uh, what what type of um, uh, what what type of uprising occurred? What what happened? It was a beta uprising. A beta uprising. Okay. Although he didn't uh, call it a beta uprising at the time, uh, someone else who was inspired by him, by the name of uh, Chris Harper, called it a beta uprising sometime in uh, actually I believe it was October one, uh, 2015. Uh, it was 2014. No, uh, some someone else named Chris Harper Mercer. Yeah in 2015 uh, called it a beta uprising. I'm only retroactively uh, assigning the label a beta uprising to the Elliot Rogers okay. uh, I moves. I thought Chris Harper Mercer uh, committed a beta uprising in Oregon in 2014, which later fueled Elliot Roger to do something similar in California in 2016. It was actually uh, the other way around. Elliot oh. Roger in 2014, his uh, what? His You're right. I'm sorry. Yes. His um, what I'm uh, retroactively calling uh, beta uprising mm -hmm. uh, inspired uh, Chris Harper Mercer to do the same thing in 2015. You're absolutely right. I, I, yeah, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. That makes uh, makes a lot of sense. So uh, it was uh, Elliot Roger who was the the father. Of Basically, this. The, f the, f the founding forefather the founding of the, forefather. the entire movement. Right. Right. So explain to me this movement. What's this movement about? It's basically, it's basically a movement of angry uh, incels, such as myself, who are unable to get laid. Therefore, we want to overthrow the uh, chads, mm -hmm. which would uh, force the Stacys to be forced to uh, reproduce with the incels. Right, right. Okay. When you say incels... Involuntary uh, celib celibate. Celibate. So that's just a, a, sh a short for form for, 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 for fellas who... Can't get laid. Uh, can't can't have sex. Right. Okay. And uh, what happened in the uh, Elliot Rogers uh, 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 uprising? What did he do? I know he uh, y used a uh, gun as well as a, a vehicle to um, convert the life status of certain individuals to a uh, death status. Right. Um, o only to uh, carry the message that um, incels uh, can't be oppressed. Right, right. So it was a, uh, it was an act of rebellion. Yes. And, and it was, um, and uh, and um, out of frustration and anger. You could call it an incel rebellion. Incel rebellion, exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. And um, uh, how many how many uh, lives were converted from living to, to dead? Six. Six in total. Okay. And um, uh, and he used a vehicle in that. As yes. Well, it, as part of the process of converting these lives? Yes. And uh, was anything else? Did he do anything else? I know he used a, uh, a knife right. as for his first three murders. For his first three murders, okay. All right. And, um, and then uh, what about um, Chris uh, Harper Mercer? What, uh, what did he do? He used a gun for uh, all of his murders. For all of his murders. How many, did he, how many, did he, how many people did he murder? I believe it was uh, it was either eight killed and ten injured or uh, ten killed and eight injured. Ten killed and eight injured. Okay. It was one of those two. Okay. And were these fellows active on 4chan? Yes, they were. Eh? Have you ever communicated with these fellows? Uh, I actually have, as a matter of fact. Who, who did you communicate with? Both of them, actually. Really? 
We used uh, code names actually. Okay. What was it, what were they? Uh, Elliot Roger was named of Valtharion. Valtharion. Yes. How do you spell that? V a l t h a r i o n. Okay. And uh, what was Chris uh, Harper Mercer's name? Space robot. Space robot. One word or two? Uh, one word. One camel word. case. Camel case. That means the S and the uh, R uh, were uh, both capitalized. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Uh, and okay. And what was your what was your what was your code name? Xbox Light Side. Xbox Light Side. All one word. All one word. Camel cased. No, only the uh, first letter was capitalized. The X. Yes. Okay. All right. And uh, so, what did you discuss with these guys? We discussed our uh, frustrations at um, society and being unable to get laid, and we were plotting a certain. Uh, timed strikes mm -hmm. on society in order to um, confuse and uh, shake the foundations just to put all the uh, normies in a uh, state of panic. Okay, and who would be a normie? Uh, normie means uh, normal people. That would be anyone who is uh, considered to be uh, normal by uh, the unfair standards of society. But not the Chads or Stacys. Chads and Chads Stacys, and Stacys are actually mm, above normies, or at least they think they're above normies. Of course, normies. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So is it fair to say you've got Chads and Stacys up here, normies down here, and then you've got celebs who believe that they are being Incels. repressed? Incels. Incels, sorry. Yes. Incels who believe they're being rep rep uh, uh, suppressed or repressed, yes. and and so as a result, even the playing field. Yes. The, you know, they, they, uh, they convert the Stacys and Chads from living to dead and, and to so make that we come out on us to on top. Yeah, it's more than so. Is there are, 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 so the the targets? Who are the targets for the this uprising? Be all of the uh, alpha males. All the alpha males. So the chads. Yes. So that's those are the people you that that, that you want to kill. Yes. Okay. All right. And who else? Any uh, uh any of the Stacys who uh, do not wish to uh, give their love and affection to the incels. So they, they, you, they're a target as well? Yes. To be killed? Yes. Okay, and what about the normies? No, uh, yeah, norm, normies. Yes, we, uh, do, we, do, we don't necessarily wish to uh, kill the normies, but we do wish to uh, subjugate them uh, in order to make them understand that, the, um, that our type is uh, the more superior one. Right, right. So when you say subjugate, what do you mean by that? Mean, meaning uh, either imprison them or put them in a lower position in society. Okay. So right. that they acknowledge um, the incels or the uh, Pepe the Frog types as the more superior ones. So, okay, so you're, the, uh, you're saying things that I'm, I'm not familiar with. So, sorry. So Pepe the, Pepe uh, the but Frog? We, uh, he's, he's, a, he's a mascot on 4chan. We, uh, he's a mascot? Yes. Oh, mascot on 4chan. Yes. And he's I, was, I was using a metaphor. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, he's actually uh, worshipped uh, quite frequently. Oh, okay, okay. All right. So going back to the conversation with with Chris and um, and uh, Elliot, you're talking to these fellows now. Are, when when are you having these conversations? When the, when is when do these conversations start taking place? Um, before uh, obviously before their uh, massacres because they're both dead now. Right, 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 right. Okay. And uh, and then once you learned of the so what so it was Elliot who was first in 2014. Yes. So, what did Elliot, what did what did you and Elliot talk about? Let me let me. I I find you very interesting. I do, and I I find this fascinating. Um, but I want to make sure I, I don't go too fast. Um, did you have did you ha who did you have conversation with first? Let me ask you that. Elliot. Elliot. So how did you learn of Elliot? Because on um on the. We uh, private messaged each other on uh, Reddit yep. after I saw one of uh, his posts, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we just uh, talked about each other, got to know each other, and we found each other very interesting. We both had the same uh, frustrations at society, right. despite being uh, separated by distance uh, so far apart. Right, right, right. Did you ever visit him? I uh, know, but I wish I could have. Yeah, yeah. Did he ever come and visit you? No, but I wish he did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you ever communicate uh, outside of uh, 4chan? 
did you ever communicate on anything else outside? Reddit of that? was the first place we uh, communicated. Oh, okay. And was it uh, f forever alone? Yes. In that in that subgroup. Yes. Okay. Uh, and did you ever communicate uh, on any other medium or platform? Uh, other than Reddit and 4chan, no. no. So you didn't Skype or call on the phone or anything like no. that. No. Okay. So how long does this conversation with Elliot? So so when so when specifically you, you may have mentioned it I but I wasn't listening. When specifically did you first contact or have co contact with Elliot? January of 2014. 2014. And uh, when did you stop having co uh, communication with him? Uh, as soon as he was deceased. Okay. So. Uh, his act, I, I know, took place in 2014, but I, I wasn't aware of the exact day. What day was it? May 23, uh, 2014. May 23rd. Yeah, you said that. Uh, so when did you last speak to him? May uh, 20. May 20th. And so what did he tell you? He told me that uh, he has to go. He must. He is on a very important mission, mm -hmm. and uh, he might not make it back alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what did you say to him? I uh, kind of had an idea in my head of what he was uh, planning, but I didn't want to uh, think it was true at the time. So I said, so I replied and said, uh, I wish you uh, good luck with that. Right on. Okay. Okay. And uh, were there anybody? Was there anybody else in this conversation? It was a private uh, conversation. It was a private. Okay. So there's nobody else speaking. No. Okay. And you can have private conversations outside of 4chan. It, well, like I said, it was a Reddit private message. Oh, sorry. Uh, forever, yeah. Uh, forever alone? Yeah, because anyone can uh, just private message each other since you have a registered account. Right. Okay. Okay. So you can go on the the, the forum and, and the threads and leave messages, and then you can speak to people outside of the threads privately? Yes. Okay. I'm just mad because I... I haven't been on these these websites, so it's uh, but I've heard about them, so I'm just trying to get, get familiarized with, with with how it works. So, did uh, was there was there, as far as you were aware, was there anyone else involved in uh, uh, Elliot Rogers' uh, uh, mission? I believe that he told me that uh, other members of uh, uh, 4chan were giving him uh, encouraging support so that he would have the courage to uh, start his rebellion. Right, 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 okay. And so you last speak to him on March 20th. May 20th. May 20th, I'm sorry, May 20th, 2014. Yes. He commits his 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 acts on the 23rd of May. Yes. And uh, when did you learn that uh, what he had done? I saw it on the news later that night. Later on the, on the 23rd? Yes. Okay, and what did you think? Uh, I thought that I uh, came to the understanding that this is the mission that he had to uh, carry out. Okay. All right. And anything else? I felt kind of uh, proud of him for uh, his uh, acts of bravery. Okay. All right. And what about uh, how you started to, 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 to change your thinking? Was, was, any of the, was, was, that, was any of that going on? I was starting to feel uh, radicalized at that time. You were. Okay. And when you say radicalized, what do you mean by that? Meaning, I felt it was time to take action and not just sit on the sidelines and to just uh, fester in my own sadness. Right on. Okay. All right. And so, um, so this this is starting. This is a, a process. It's not something that just. I mean, the, the, the day that you realized that uh, you were a celeb was the day that you were ridiculed by these girls at this party. But on that Halloween of 2013. Right. But then, as you got to know. Uh, Elliot, and then uh, understanding his his uh, his uh, mission and uh, what he had done, you began to to start become radicalized in terms of your thought process. Yes. Okay. And so, what takes place next as part of this 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 growing radicalization? To be honest, uh, the planning didn't occur until about a month ago, most of it was actually just thinking okay. and daydreaming. Okay, all right. So the thinking and daydreaming, when did that start? That started about a month after the rebellion in uh, May of 2014. 
Okay, so... So, I mean, so, so in June, I started uh, thinking about this stuff. And then that continued right up till about a month ago? Yes, which is when I uh, booked uh, the uh, van with the rider okay. in order to uh, use as a tool for rebellion. Okay, all right. So t t take me through that process. What was going through your mind and how was, you know, what were you thinking when you were doing all of this? What was going on? I was thinking that it was a time that I uh, stood up to the Chads and Stacys. Okay. And then, and then, so what happened? So this, tell me what takes place. So I uh, booked the van. Yeah. And then I just simply wait until uh, today. Yeah. And then I go rent the van and then I uh, drive it, take it downtown to Toronto. Okay. And I just start using it as a weapon. Okay. All right. And and so when you say that, what, what do you mean by that? Meaning I it, the vehicle collided with uh, several pedestrians, some of who are no longer alive as a result. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, so yeah, that, that's a lot of information. Take me back to uh, a month ago. You said this is when this whole planning started. Yes. Okay. So. About a month ago, where were you at that point? I was at Seneca College, and I decided to uh, phone Ryder and uh, book a, uh, either a truck or a van with them. And they had a 10-foot a, a van uh, available, mm -hmm. so I figured that this is perfect. Mm -hmm. I can not It's uh, big enough to have an effect, but not too big that I can't maneuver with it. Uh, so van was the perfect uh, medium size to use as my uh, weapon. Right on, okay. So you're at Seneca? Yes. You said? And where specifically at Seneca are you? Are I you was at the uh, college library at when I made the phone call. At the college library when you made the phone call? Yes. So the, the, the library that you just drew for me? Yes. Okay. And where were you specifically in the library? These desks. Okay. What you just... It was actually a... F my face was facing north. So show me... So show me where you were. I was sitting here, facing this way. Okay, so you just uh, just put uh, put um, rider phone call. Okay. So you're sitting there, and this is about a month ago. What day specifically is this? It was near the uh, beginning of April, so it wasn't exactly a month ago. It was but almost a month ago. Okay, all right. So you're at your desk, and what time of day is it? Midday. Midday, and uh, you said you, you made a, a phone call? Yes. And how and, and oh, how do you make that phone call? Um, by Googling uh, the rental number for uh, uh, the nearest uh, rider location. Okay, and how do you Google the... I just simply uh, said uh, rider uh, rental locations. On my laptop. On your laptop. Okay, so when you say on your laptop, were you using a school computer? No, actually, I was using a Windows computer. You because I, cause I know I said before I have a Mac, but I also have a Windows, which I take to school, just because oh. I don't want the Mac to get damaged. Oh, okay, so you've got two laptops. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, what's your other laptop? The Windows. Yeah, Mac I, and Windows. Yeah, no, I guess, is it, uh, I mean, it, what, what's the, the name of the, the, the actual laptop, the, the, the make? Uh, it's an, it's a Lenovo. Lenovo, oh, I see, okay. And what color is that? Black. Black. And where is that uh, in your bedroom? Uh, it's located in my closet. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, you're, you're, where you hang your clothes? Yes, above them. Above? It's on the top shelf? Yes. Oh, okay. How many closets in your, in your bedroom? Just one. Just one, okay. Uh, so you take that, the Lenovo laptop, to your school. Yes. Uh, at Seneca and in the library at the desk. You Google the nearest rider. Yes. Rental, truck rental. Yes. Okay. And what made you decide to choose rider? Uh, because I had looked up some reviews online. They uh, were act people were saying uh, good stuff about them. Because I had looked at some other companies such as U-Haul, uh, mm -hmm. and people were complaining about them, saying that the trucks never arrive on time, There's an, the customer support is terrible, uh, but, they, but they, people loved rider. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, that makes sense. 
so this was just reviews that you'd read online that made you choose Ryder? Yes. Okay, can I ask why were you looking specifically for uh, a truck? Because it would be uh, large enough to uh, inflict uh, severe damage. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, okay, so how do you contact Ryder? By phoning them, basically. And, and what, uh, what phone do you use? My uh, cell phone. Oh, okay, so you've got a cell phone with you? Yes. All right, what type of phone is that? Android. An Android phone, okay. And that's an actual make? That's, it's, uh, well, it's either, your phone's either going to be Android or iOS. My phone is uh, Android. W what's the make of the phone, though? Asus Zen 4, uh, was it Asus Zen Phone 4. Okay, and where's that phone? What do you mean by where? Where, where's, where is your cell phone right now? It was uh, confiscated. Oh, so we have it? Yes. Okay. And what's the phone number to, to, to yourself? 416-836-9711. Okay. And so you call Ryder and, uh, from Seneca. And uh, what uh, Ryder um, truck rental, what, what's, what's the address? Uh, 700 uh, Cornerstone Road. Oh, okay. And uh, so what do you say to them? What's the conversation here? I just um, said, hey, how are you doing? I was interested in uh, renting a truck. I uh, told him that I wanted to just help a friend move furniture around. Okay, all right. Do you remember the individual you spoke to? I believe it was either Matt or Mike. A Matt or a Mike, okay. And uh, what did Matt or Mike say? That, yeah, we do have some uh, tr trucks available and that uh, we can rent them out to you. And that he asked me when I wished to uh, uh, rent it, and I said April 23, and lo and behold, it, it was available today. Okay. Can I ask why you chose April 23? I, uh, it was, uh, I felt it would be a more symbolic if I had uh, completed my uh, exams. Okay, okay. Okay, but uh, apart from the 23rd, there was no other reason? No. So if you had finished your exams on the 15th, that would have been the 15th? It would have been the 16th. Oh, the 16th, okay. All right. Uh, so, you, you, uh, how long is your conversation with the, the fellow from Ryder? About uh, two minutes. Okay. Because uh, it was fairly quick. Okay, all right. And then what happens? So, you made this phone call. Sorry, let me ask you this. D did you reserve the, the truck? Yes. Oh, you, okay. And what, di what did you tell him in terms of reserving? How was that going to take place? Um, I, s I said that um, we agreed that I could just simply uh, pick it up. Okay. Did you have to give a deposit or anything like that? Yes, I had to give. It was about a four hundred dollar deposit when I uh, arrived at the location. Okay, but that's not till later. Correct. Okay, so you just reserved the truck. There was no requirement for you to give any type of credit card or, or form of payment. Correct. Okay. So you reserved the truck. Then what happens? Then I uh, simply uh, record the uh, reservation and then I uh, go on that day to uh, pick it up. So nothing happens for approximately one month? Correct. So you don't, you're don't you not thinking about this? Or I am thinking about it, you're but I didn't okay. need to make any further preparations. Okay, so what are you thinking about while you know, you're waiting to, to make these preparations, or waiting to rent the truck? Uh, the uprising. I was thinking that I would inspire uh, future masses to uh, join me in my uprising as well. Okay, all right. Now how are you going to do that? Uh, I was going to uh, tell uh, people on uh, 4chan uh, beforehand. Okay, all right. And, and did you do that? Yes, I did. I did a, a one day in advance. Oh, okay, all right. So, did you actually go on to 4chan? Yes. And post messages? Yes. Okay, and and what name did you, or is there anonymous who said that? Yeah, is that right? that's that's the default. If you don't specify a name, it's going to say anonymous. Okay, Did you did you specify a name? No, it was okay. anonymous. Okay, so it was anonymous. Okay. Yes. And uh, what time did you go on to 4chan? Approximately at 3 p.m. yesterday. 3 p.m. yesterday, okay. And what specifically did you say? I was using a code language to avoid uh, detection by the authorities. I, was, I stated that there will be a beta uprising tomorrow. I encourage others to uh, follow suit. Okay, okay. And did you post on any other... Uh, uh, Mediums, medians, mediums, media, media. Any, any other? Media? No, just no? Uh, four chan. Just four chan. Okay. Did anybody reply? Yes. Uh, uh, quite a few people uh, were uh, congratulating me uh, because I suspect they 
probably knew what I meant by what I said. Okay. And in fact, uh, I remember there was one poster who said he was from Edmonton and he would be planning a, a similar uprising in November uh, 15 of this year. Of this year, okay. Okay, and what uh, specifically did he say in terms of what he was He doing? said, hey, thanks, man. Uh, you give, you've given me great inspiration. Okay. November 15, Edmonton, the continuation of the rebellion. Okay, okay. Those are his words. Okay, I understand, okay. And uh, uh, so that was uh, the one thing you did to, as you were thinking about this and planning. Uh, what, what else were you were you were you doing? Well, I was um, finishing up my schoolwork as uh, normal. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because I still have to uh, uh, worry about my schoolwork. Right. Right. Of course. Anything else? Uh, no, nothing out of the else out of the ordinary. So. In terms of your, uh, in terms of the time that you spent thinking about this over that month, if you were to break it down into a percentage, I would say eighty percent of the time was spent thinking about it. Even while I was doing other activities, you were you were you were thinking I, about. I was very preoccupied with it. Very preoccupied with it. Okay, and in this thinking, what were you thinking specifically? About how. Uh, how the foundations of the world would be shaken by this event. Okay. And uh, when you say that, what do you mean by the foundations of this world? Meaning that I, I, I'm, I was fairly confident that others would be inspired to uh, repeat the same actions as me, in basically just to uh, overthrow society. Okay. Okay. And uh, so this... Is there, sorry, is there any other thought process going on? That was pretty much the main thought process. Okay. And, and, uh, okay. So then it comes to today or yesterday, the 23rd, right? Because uh, I guess the midnight's already passed. Yeah, exactly. So it was yesterday. So uh, walk me through your day. You get up in the morning. What time do you get up? Uh, at about 7. About 7 o'clock. Okay. And then what do you do? I have breakfast, I brush, mm -hmm. uh, nothing unusual. Right. And then what happens? I check my emails uh, just to see if there's any school-related school stuff or anything that, uh, such as job offers, anything like that. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go for a walk around the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then I went uh, to the uh, rider location. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, just r took the van mm -hmm. and uh, brought it out to Toronto, and a, and then I committed the this rebellious act. Okay, all right. So you get up around seven. Yes. Okay. Uh, you said you have some breakfast. Yes. You brushed. Yes. Okay. Uh, you go on your 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 computer. Yes. What computer? What computer were you on? Mac. The Mac. And you said you check some emails. Yes. Did you get any emails that that related to this? Uh, no. Did you send any out in relation to this? No. Okay. So you, uh, you're you on your computer. How long are you on your, on your computer for? I'm on there for several hours a day. Okay. Be, just because mainly, uh, since I'm a software developer anyways, I would have to use my computer anyways. Right, right, okay. And then from there, uh, you go for a walk? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, where, do you, where, do you, where do you go for a walk? Uh, around the neighborhood. You just just walked around on foot. Yes. Okay. When do you leave the house? Uh, usually at about eight a.m. after I've already finished breakfast and have a uh, brush and everything. Okay. And so uh, you leave the house at around eight a.m. and you just walk around the neighborhood. Yes. And what are you thinking about as as, as you're walking around the neighborhood? I'm uh, thinking. I'm just thinking about life. Okay. Is 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 your focus on your mission at all or anything like that? Sometimes, but although to be honest, I'm not thinking about it 100% of the time. Okay. Uh, sometimes I just try to, when I walk, I just try to clear my thoughts. Okay, all right. Uh, were you conscious this morning, though, that today was the day that this was Yes, I was very aware of it. Very aware. It was okay. very pressing on my mind. Very pressing, okay. So how long are you outside of the house? Usually my walks are about half an hour to an hour. So is it fair to say that's how long you were out today? Yes. Okay. And... Uh, from the time you get up to the time you leave the house, do you have conversation with anybody? Uh, you mean just yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. 
No. Okay. And when you're outside, do you speak to anybody? Uh, no. Are you uh, chatting with anyone on your phone during this time at all? Or no. Like that? No. Uh, you're not messaging on 4chan or anything like that? I did post a Facebook message uh, right before the uh, the attack. Okay. Stating that the incel rebellion has already begun. Okay. And, uh, okay. All right. Uh, posted so it with my phone. Okay. So let's just work up to that. So now you've gone for a walk. Uh, it's pressing on your mind, this, this attack. You, you come back home about 45 minutes to an hour later. So what time is that? I would say that would be a approximately nine. Nine o'clock? Yes. Okay. And, uh, and then what do you do? Then I just, uh, I sit back, uh, I sit on my computer, just play some random uh, browser games until it's, uh, it's time to leave. Okay, and so what computer are you on? Mac. Mac. And what uh, browser games are you playing? What do you mean by that? Uh, just random games on the internet. I was actually I was actually playing uh, City Jumper. It's a very old game. Okay. It's uh, I just wanted to pass the time until I left. Okay. And so while you're playing this game, do you have a particular time in your mind that you're going to do this? Uh, well, the um, truck rental was at, or van rental was at uh, 1 p.m. Okay. So and I already had a Google Maps route plan. I uh, left the house at 11.25. I took the bus to uh, the rider location. Okay, so you're at home. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm clear as to what was going on. So you're at home, you're playing some online video games. Yes. Uh, you knew that the truck rental was at one o'clock. Yes. So uh, you leave the house at 12.25? Yes. Okay, and how do you leave the house? No, sorry, 11.25. Oh, sorry, 11.25. 11.25, how do you leave the house? Uh, on foot, I walk to the bus stop. Okay. I uh, take the bus stop. Uh, I take the bus uh, uh, very uh, close to the rider location. Okay. And then I walk from the where I got off the stop to that rental location, and then I there from there I picked up the uh, van. Okay. So when you what what bus stop did you catch the bus at? I uh, went on 85C westbound at my house, and then I transferred to another bus, which unfortunately I don't remember the number because I've only used that. That, that other route is not one of the uh, main routes, so I don't remember the number. Okay, so but where's the bus stop that you would have attended in order to, to, to board the bus? The first bus was uh, Bayview and 16th. Did you walk to Bayview and 16th? Yes, because it's only about five minutes from my house. Okay, and so, you, there's a bus stop there at Bayview and 16th? Yes. And uh, I'm assuming we're talking about a York Regional Transit bus? Yes. And what was the name of the bus? The number of the bus? 85C. 85C. And, it, and which direction is that bus going? West. It's going west. On yes. 16th? No. Yes. 16th? Yes. Okay. It's going west on 16th. So you, you catch that bus? Yes. And how do you uh, how do you pay to get on the bus? A uh, bus ticket. A bus ticket. Okay. Um, and uh, what time do you get on the bus? Uh, at about 11.30. About 11.30, so about five minutes from your house. Mm -hmm. okay. And then how long of a bus ride till you get off and get on the, on the, on the, on the next bus? It was about uh, half an hour until the next bus. Okay, so where do you get off the, the first bus? What, what bus stop do you get off of? Uh, Highway uh, 7 and uh, uh, Weston. Highway 7 and Weston, okay. And you board a second bus? Yes. I, and where did you board that second bus? At that same stop. Same stop, and uh, what you don't know the number of that bus? I don't remember, unfortunately. Okay, but that's, uh, it's a York Regional Transit bus? Yes. Okay, and so what direction do you, do you head uh, uh, when you get on the second bus? It went north, and then it went east again, and then it dropped me off about a five minute walk from the uh, truck rental location. Okay, so what street would that have been at? I don't remember unfortunately because it was a, one of those small neighborhood roads, but it was very close to a uh, Credit Stone Road. It was very close to Credit Stone Road? Yes. Credit Stone Road, what would be the major intersection? I believe the uh, bordering uh, street was um, 
Pennsylvania Avenue. It was actually a neighborhood road. It wasn't in a major intersection. Okay. Okay. So Credit Stone in Pennsylvania. Yes. It was. It was in or around that location. Yes. And from there, you walk to the rider uh, rent uh, truck rental. Yes. Okay. And. Uh, do you have your cell phone on you at this time? It was confiscated. Oh, at that time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, and the same cell phone that you just told me, the Acer cell phone? Asus uh, Zenfone 4. Right, that phone. Yes. Okay. Uh, do you receive or make any phone calls during that time? No. Okay. Uh, what about, uh, okay, we'll, we'll ask you that later. So you, you walk to the rental store or uh, the, the truck rental store. What time do you arrive at the truck rental store? At about uh, 1230. Okay, 12.30. All right. And so you walk in, and what do you do? I uh, say, hi, uh, my name is Alec Manassian. I'm uh, here. I know I'm early, but I have a truck rental at 1. Um, so th then I f end up filling out s some forms, signing some stuff. I wait a bit, and then eventually I'm given the van. Okay. And the individual you speak to, what do they look like? He was wearing a uh, bright vest. Bright vest? Okay. Well, what color of skin did he have? White. The white skin. Did you catch a name? Uh, no. No? Uh, how old would he have been? He was probably in his 30s. Probably in his 30s. And what color was his hair? I think it was dark brown. Dark brown. How tall was he? Uh, he was about 5'9". Oh, 5'9". How much did he weigh? I would estimate to be about 152. 150? 152. 152. 152 pounds? Yes. Okay. I'm very precise like that. Okay, okay. That's good. Okay, and so in terms of his build, how would you describe his build? Um, you know, it was kind of lean but slightly muscular at the same time. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, uh, what about facial hair? Uh, he was clean shaven. Clean shaven, okay. Any other distinguishing characteristics about him that would put, you know, center him out from anyone else? None in particular. Okay. So, sorry, what do you say? You're, you're there early, but you want to know if this truck is available? Yes. Okay. And uh, in terms of the trucks, did you have, uh, were, were you given a choice of trucks? I was given I, I was given a choice um, when I was making the, uh, fo the phone call earlier this month. Right. So I chose the 10-foot uh, one. Okay. And although it's actually a, a van, uh, but we were, it was, it's sometimes being referred to as a truck. Uh, during the uh, rental, right, right. We're uh, so it, I'm assuming there were there were various sizes of trucks, vans available. Yes. Okay. Was the van the largest? No, it was actually quite small compared to the actual trucks. Okay. So, what did you? So I, I, what did you? Why did you choose the van? Uh, because. It was larger than a car, therefore large enough to be effective, but not so large that it made maneuverability hard. Oh, I see. Okay, that makes sense. And when did you come to that realization? I was thinking about it before I, um, uh, well, before I made the phone call. I was thinking I need something powerful enough to be effective, but like I said before, uh, and small enough that it's uh, maneuverable. Okay. So you were thinking about that before. Was this? When, when specifically did this this thought process come into your mind? About two days before I made the phone call. Okay. So am I f is it fair to say you, you reserved a, a larger truck, but then when you went into Ryder, after thinking about the logistics of your mission, you no, I would, uh, I just the um, the van that I used was the was what I uh, rented. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. Uh, okay. So you're at the counter. You rent the van. Uh, what does the individual, the, the the salesperson, say to you? Um. Well, he just asks me if I have my driver's license. He asks me for a credit card. Right. I uh, I use it. The card gets approved, and then he says, "Okay, wait here. I'm gonna uh, get the uh, van for you." And then about ten minutes later, he has it for me. Okay, so the you produced a, uh, your Ontario driver's license? Yes. Okay. And uh, what type of credit card do you produce? Visa. Your, and what a banking institution does it? Does it TD. So it's a TD Visa. Is it a, uh, is, does it a particular brand of TD Visa? Does it have a particular uh, No, it's name? just simply a TD Visa. Just a simply, simple t TD Visa. 
Okay, and um, I'm going to ask, do you know the number of your visa card? I don't remember it. You don't remember, okay. Um, uh, but it's in your name? Yes. Okay, so the fellow behind the counter takes your your identification and the visa card, card presumably he he charges you for the rental? Yes. Okay, and how much was the rental? I don't remember, to be honest. I think it was, I remember I had to pay $400 to deposit. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't really paying attention to the cost because I knew I would be able to cover it anyways. Okay, all right. Um, did you s sign any documents? I uh, signed uh, on a tablet. Okay, all right, all right. Um, were you given any type of uh, receipt? Yes, I. Uh, in fact, I put it inside a uh, folder, mm -hmm. which was in the van, which I'm assuming has probably been uh, confiscated okay. as the van was probably searched. Right, right. And so where was the receipt in the in the in the van? Inside a uh, some folder. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, where uh, was it? It was it was next to the uh, steering wheel near the coffee cup holders. Okay. All right. Same place where my uh, phone and wallet were. Okay. All right. So you're, you've now s uh, paid for the van. Uh, you've signed for it. You've been given a, a paper receipt. Uh, the and then what happens? Uh, then I, uh, as I said before, he tells me to wait okay. uh, as he's uh, getting the van, and so I wait about ten minutes. Okay. And then uh, he brings the van, and then I uh, go into it, and then I take it downtown to Toronto, and I start uh, using it. Okay. So when you're, uh, presumably the van gets pulled up in front of the, the entrance. Is that? Uh, yeah, story? he he pulled it up next to the building, and okay. he uh, made it ready uh, to be able to easily exit out. Okay. And so, do you do an inspection of the van to make sure that there's no damage you're going to? Uh, uh, no, from? I didn't bother because the van didn't appear to be damaged or anything like oh. that. Okay. Uh, so uh, he gives you the keys. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, what do you do at that point? I uh, drive off. Okay. And what route do you take? Uh, I uh, drove down a uh, cornerstone, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, credit stone, uh, until I uh, reached, I believe, uh, Highway 7. Okay. Uh, then I went east on Highway 7, and then I took the uh, ramp to uh, Young, and then I went south on Young until I uh, reached the uh, attack location uh, near Fitch. Okay. So, what direction are you traveling on Credit Stone? South. South, and then you go west on... No, east. Sorry, east, east on, on Highway 7. On Highway and then 7. I and then I take that ramp to Young. Okay. And then on Young, I continue south. Okay. So, when do you leave Ryder? I wasn't looking at the time when I left, but I know I received the, the van before 1 p.m., although it was, uh, the booking was actually scheduled for 1. Okay. All right. And how long does it take you to get from... Rider to Young Street. Oh, and to Young? Uh, to the beginning of Young? To, to the beginning of the, uh, the beginning of the attack. Oh, to the near Young and Fitch. Yeah. I would estimate about uh, 20 to 30 minutes. 20 to 30 minutes. Now, what are you thinking while you're in the van? Uh, I'm thinking that this is it. This is the day of retribution. Okay. And uh, anything else in your mind? Just that. That's okay. that, that's the only thing that's in my mind. It's just burning in my mind. Burning in your mind. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so let me ask you this, because this is really interesting. Why do you choose Young and Finch? I, w I didn't choose Young and Finch in particular. I was driving down Young because I knew it would be a busy area, mm -hmm. and then as soon as I saw there were uh, pedestrians, mm -hmm. I just decided to uh, go for it. Okay. And so where specifically were you, in terms of your specific location, where were you when you just decided to go for it? I was uh, at some traffic lights. Okay, where? Um, much I don't remember. The only reason, in fact, uh, if, if I hadn't, uh, I remember some other, uh, I, I had heard some other officer or mention Young and Finch before. That's the only reason I really remember it. Okay. But otherwise, I actually wouldn't have remembered you that it's remember. yeah, okay. Young and Finch. I just knew that I started seeing a lot of people walking. Okay. Uh, it, it might it might to stand. Am I correct when I when I say that you knew at least you were on Young Street? 
Yes. And you knew that you were. Because I specifically chose it beforehand. Because that's that's why. Because I even looked for that ramp from Highway Seven to Young. Right. Okay. Okay. So, nevertheless, you're at a you're at a you're at a stoplight. You said. Yes. You're at. And now, are you faced with a red light? You're stopped. Uh, yes, but as soon as it turned green, I uh, started going. Okay, and t t just walk me through this, okay, step by step. So it turns green, and what are you thinking? I'm thinking that uh, this is it. I see all these people. It's uh, time to uh, go for it. Time to go for it. And what do you do? I uh, floor the pedal. Yep. I speed the van towards them, and I uh, allow the van to uh, collide with them. Okay, and... Then what happens? Uh, some people get knocked out of the way. Some people roll o over the top of the van. Okay. And then what, what happens? I uh, continue doing that until... Um, I, in fact, actually, to be honest, the only reason I stopped my attack was because someone's drink got splashed on my uh, windshield, and I was worried that I would uh, crash the van anyway, so I decided, okay, now... I, I wanted to do more, but I've kind of been foiled by a lack of visibility. So then that's when I uh, pulled, I uh, turned right and I pulled, and I saw the cops approaching, so I decided to pull over and get out of my van. Okay. How long do you travel from the moment that you, you decide this is it, the light turns green, and you uh, mount the sidewalk, is that right? Yes to the time that you stop. How long in terms of the distance would that have been? About two, traffic, two or three traffic lights. Two or three traffic lights. Okay. So you turn right at what street? I don't remember which street. I wasn't paying attention. Why do you turn right? Um, because I... Because there wasn't any convenient place to stop at Young, and I... And like I said, that there was a lack of visibility on my windshield. I could hear the cops coming anyway, so the, the, when I turned right, there was a convenient place to pull over on the sidewalk. Okay. Okay, and so you're now, so you're, 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 you, you physically stop your vehicle? Yes. You physically stop. So you end the assault? Yes. Okay. Um, and you end it because you can't see? Yes. And you knew the cops were coming? Yes. Okay. And so then what happens at that point? Uh, I I see a patrol car pull over and I hear the cops screaming at me to get out. So I get out and I uh, point my wallet at the cop in it with the intent for it to be confused at the gun so that I could be fatally shot. Okay. And was that something you were thinking about? Yes. I know. What I mean, I, I, what I'm saying even, is even before had I uh, premediated as an attempted uh, suicide by cop. You wanted to. You wanted to be killed by the police. Yes. Okay. Um, can I ask why you decided to to, to equip yourself with a wallet, and not something else? Uh, I was worried. I was thinking about purchasing a toy gun, right. but I was kind of paranoid that some, for whatever reason, the Rydal Rental Company would ask to see my pockets or any bag if I chose to bring that, so I decided to go as stealthy as possible so no one suspects anything. Okay, all right. Nevertheless, you get out of the, the van, the officer, or, or sorry, uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, because I want to make sure I get this right. You get out of the van because the officer orders you out? Yes. Okay. Uh, and you want to uh, die by, uh, by, by suicide by police, uh, so you point your wallet at him? Yes. Okay, and, and uh, do you say anything to the officer? Uh, I actually told him that I had a gun in my pocket, which okay. was untrue. Right. Uh, then I, had to, I twice I stuck my left hand in my uh, pocket and attempted to do this just to uh, provoke a uh, reaction. Okay. Uh, that, uh, he, unfortunately, he didn't react, right. so then I ended up being ordered to the ground, so I knew at that point he's not going to shoot me, so uh, I've lost. So I, just, I had no choice but to just get on the ground. Okay, so just walk me through this step by step because I'm a, I'm a little confused. So you, you get out of the van, so you, you, you turn right, you can't see, you hear the police, you know they're coming, you see the police officer approach, you stop your vehicle, uh, you realize this is the, the end, he orders you out, you get out of the, the van. Yes. 
Now, your planning, your plan was to die by suicide by cop. So, you said you reached into your pocket twice. Well, actually, well, originally, I, I, the entire time I had, I was holding my wallet with my right hand. But then when I saw that that wasn't working, I reached into my pocket with my left hand and quickly pulled it out and uh, formed my hand into the shape of a gun like this. Okay. Um, with the hope that he would panic and shoot me. That, of course, didn't happen. Okay. And you, how, how many times did you do that? Your Twice. With your left hand? And all the while you had your... Wallet, wallet with the other hand? Right hand. Okay. Um, and so realizing that the officer wasn't going to shoot you, what did you do at that point? I realized I had no choice but to get on the ground because I was probably going to be uh, tackled anyways or tased. And if I'm, if I'm going to live, I'd rather not encounter physically a painful experience. So I decided I have no choice but to admit defeat at that point. Right, okay. And so when you say admit defeat, what did you do? I uh, got on the ground. Okay. And, and in terms of how, how, how did you get on the ground? Well, I turned around, I got on my knees, and then I got on flat on the ground. Face down? Yes. Okay. And then what happened? Then uh, he put his knee in me, uh, on my back, okay. and then he handcuffed me. Okay. Uh, and another officer arrived and pinned me down as well. Okay. All right. And then from there, you were placed in the car, and we already talked about that. Yes. Okay. That's quite an experience. That is quite a... Uh, not the usual everyday experience. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Um, did I miss anything? I believe that's everything. Alec, I thank you for talking to me. I really do. I really do. I really appreciate that. You've given me some insight. And, uh, I appreciate it too. Um, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling good. Okay. We've been here a while. Do you need to borrow the washroom? Uh, well, yes, but if there's anything urgent, I, uh, I'm able to wait. Okay, can I ask you to s s uh, sit tight for uh, two seconds? Okay. I want to get another bottle of water for me because I'm really thirsty. Um, what I'll do is um, I'm going to step out, um, and then I'll come back, and if there's any other questions I have, I will, uh, I will, uh, I will speak to you about that, okay? Okay. I'm just going to sign this here with my name. It's the 24th now, isn't it? Okay. Okay, so title will be right back.
Let me take you out. Let's use the washroom and then we'll get uh, back. Should I uh, leave this here, or yeah, am I allowed yeah, to take yeah, it with well, me? Uh, no, you'll leave it here because okay. uh, you'll. Uh, you're, we're going to come back. Okay. I'm just going to put the arm on here. Yeah, seconds and then put a seat there right back. Do you want me to eat? Uh, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay, tell me what happened from the time we left to the time we came back. You mean just now? Yeah. Uh, I went to the uh, washroom. Mm -hmm. I uh, urinated in the uh, toilet bowl. Mm -hmm. I uh, washed my hands uh, thoroughly at the sink. Uh, then I uh, took some paper towel. I uh, used that to close the top. Mm -hmm. uh, so with that, paper towel in the garbage, and I took two more uh, uh, pieces of paper towel, used that to open the knob. While holding the door with my foot, I put the paper towel in the uh, garbage. And then we walked back? Yes. Did I wanted to ensure that there would be no uh, germs on my head. Perfect. Uh, did we have any conversation while we were on site? Uh, no. No. Um, I, I think I pointed out where the bathroom was. I yes. said it sits here on the right. And then you went in and uh, did you speak to anybody else? No. Anybody speak to you? No. Okay. Um, I was thinking, uh, you mentioned you went to Quebec. Yes. Why, why did you go to Quebec? Uh, I went to uh, Montreal. Oh, the mountain? No, for, okay. Yeah, for uh, summer hiking. Oh, okay. All right. When, when did you go specifically? I've gone uh, a few times in the past. Okay. And why Mount Trombone? Uh Because I'd heard it's a, a good place for uh, hiking in the summer. Is that something you do? You like to do as a hobby? Yes. Do you like to hike? Yeah, okay. Uh, who did you go with? Uh, I don't wish to specify. Okay. Uh, how long were you there? Uh, just for a weekend. Okay, all right. Um, you were in Buffalo. I understand. I don't recall ever being in Buffalo. You never recall going to Buffalo? No. no? Uh, my understanding is you traveled to Buffalo and travel to another uh, uh, U.S. state? I have uh, been to Chicago and Boston, San Francisco and L.A. Okay, all right. Okay, when did you go down there? Um, San Francisco and L.A. were Christmas of 2003 and 2013. Mm -hmm. Chicago was a uh, winter of, uh, sorry, well, Christmas time of uh, 2007. Mm -hmm. Boston was a uh, May of uh, uh, 2012. Okay. Uh, what was the reason to go? What was the reason for going to the U.S.? Uh, just vacation. Oh, for, oh, did you go with the family? Yes. Okay. Uh, can I ask what religion you are? Uh, I'm not of any uh, particular religion. You you you, you, don't, you don't follow any denominations. I'm atheist. You're atheist. Oh, yes. I see. Okay. Can I ask what religion you were raised? I wasn't raised uh, with any religion. Oh, okay. Uh, is it fair to say your parents aren't religious? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so you don't have any religious ideology or no, uh, uh, you know, particular uh, religious uh, faith or following of any kind. Correct. Okay. Um, you uh, did you go to your prom? No, I didn't. You didn't go to your high school prom? No. Okay. 
Um, have you ever had a girlfriend? No. Okay. Can I ask you something? This is I, it's personal, but uh, uh, given what you've told me, it, yeah, I, I believe it's relevant. Uh, have you ever had uh, an intimate relationship with with a woman? Unfortunately, I haven't. Okay. Is that something you you would want to do? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, can you tell me why it is that you haven't had an intimate relationship with a woman? I feel it's because I'm uh, too nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, have you you made you made attempts, or I should say, have you made attempts to, to have uh, an intimate relationship with uh, with a woman? Uh, yes, I did ask a girl out once, but she uh, rejected me. Oh, okay. Where was that? Uh, that was in uh, 2012. 2012. So it was before the October Halloween of 2013. Yes. Okay. Uh, and was that? Did that leave you with? Uh, I mean, how did how did that leave you? I uh, felt crushed at that point. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm talking about the the 2012 incident with the the girl. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Alec, remember when we talked about telling the truth? And, yes. And I, I asked you to, you know, if you were going to tell me your side of the story, which you did, and I appreciate that. Uh, has has everything you told me been the truth? Yes. Okay, because I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. There are there, there's one aspect of your story that doesn't doesn't cooperate with with the information we have. Okay, there is there's one piece to your story that uh, is inconsistent with what we know. Would you care to guess what what piece that is? I can't think of the inconsistency. Uh, how you specifically got to the, the rider uh, truck rental. If I was to suggest to you that we received information that somebody dropped you off there, would I be right? I don't wish to answer that. Okay. The reason why I say that is because it's, you know, what you've told me, I believe you. Okay, but you know, I I asked you to tell me at the I asked you at the beginning to tell me the truth. That if you were going to talk to me, all I wanted was to be from the heart, which it was, and to be the truth, which I believe the, the majority of. You. Okay, um, so what I'd like to do is at this particular at this particular juncture, if there's a portion, I don't want. I'm not asking you to reveal anybody or names. Okay. But if there's a portion of your statement that is not true, okay, I'd like to know. Because it's important. It's about the truth. You're very forthright and uh, upfront about what's happened. But it's important that we get the truth. Okay? I, I'm not asking for names, all right? But in terms of how you got to the rider dealership. Were you telling me the truth or not? Yes, I was telling the truth. You were telling me the truth as to how you got there? Yes. You're not lying? No. So in other words, the truth is you caught the, the bus? Yes. The truth is that you did not get dropped off by somebody? Correct. Why is it that we would receive information I, sorry. I can't think of a reason why. I'm going to be straight up with you. Your dad has told us that he dropped you off at a Starbucks coffee shop earlier today, or earlier yesterday. Yes, that is what happened. Okay. So why wouldn't you tell me that? Because I was worried that you would think he was an accomplice. Okay. I, I don't he was not aware of this. Okay. I, and I believe you. I believe you would say that. Okay. I want you to know your dad's not in trouble. Okay. And we're not, you know, we're not looking at your dad as being an accomplice. Okay. You have my word on that. Okay. But what's important, Alex, is that uh, I get the truth. Okay. Um, we, we don't believe that your dad is an accomplice. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you. 
okay? Um, you're not, your dad's, your dad, your family is not in any kind of trouble, okay? But I need the truth, okay? So let's go back. You said you got up in the morning. Yes. Okay. What time did you get up in the morning? Uh, I believe it was at about 7. Okay. Now, you told me what happened. Yes. Was, was all of that the truth in terms of getting up, having breakfast, brushing? Yes. And then leaving the house around 8 to go for a walk? Yes. And you were out for about an hour to an, uh, 45 minutes to an hour? Yes. Is that the truth? Yes. Okay. And then you come back? Yes. And then you were playing on video games? Is that the truth? Yes. All right. So from that point, what happens? I am uh, given a ride to uh, the Starbucks location near Highway 7 and Weston. Okay. And then from that point, I uh, walk to the uh, rider uh, rental location, and from there I uh, pick up my van. Okay, so we're not, if we go back to the York Regional Transit System, we're not going to see you m boarding the bus. Correct. Okay, so that was a lie. Correct. Okay, so what did you tell your dad? Why did, you know, what did you tell your dad? That I that told him I was meeting up with a friend. And what, what's your friend's name? Brandon Levine. Okay. And, and what was the purpose for this meeting? What did you tell you that your dad the purpose of this meeting to be? Uh, just to be able to um, catch up on old times, talk with each other, and chat. Okay, that's what we That's what we All right, well, thank you for talking about it. I want to ask you this, okay, we're not looking at anybody else uh, as being involved in this, okay? Um, so in light of all of that, is there anything else that you've told me that isn't true? No. Everything else is the truth? Yes. Uh, you're, you're, you're being upfront and honest with me? Yes. Okay. Um, while you were planning all of, planning the attack, starting approximately a month ago, when you were in the, the planning and deliber uh, <laughs> deliberation stage, right through to uh, getting arrested, who did you talk to about this attack? 4chan. 4chan, okay. So what do you mean by that? Meaning, I uh, posted two days before the attack that um, I hinted that there would be um, another uh, beta uprising, and that, and then when there were replies, some of the people, based on the replies, I could tell that they kind of knew what was going to happen. Okay. Did you have any uh, conversation with anybody else? Not in real life. What does that mean? I mean, not in person. Okay. How did you? Or wh uh, over what uh, medium did you did you did you communicate? Just four chan. So what do you mean by not in real life or not in person? Who are you speaking? Well, about? real life means you're not using the computer. Right. Uh, so I did not inform anyone in person of these plans. Okay. Outside of four chan and leaving threads or messages on threads. Who else did you talk to using uh, social media or, or I'm, I'm speaking specifically to individuals. Who specifically did you tell? No one. No one. You mentioned you were playing... Um, City Jumper. No, City Jumper. Before that, you were playing uh, uh, Call of Duty and you played... Halo. Halo, and you've played uh, GTA. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto. How did you play these games? I mean, I know you played them oh, with an the Xbox uh, 360. With an Xbox 360. Where's that? Where's that Xbox 360? I actually uh, no longer have one. I used to have one. Okay. Where did you? Where did you? Uh, when did you get rid of it? Uh, well, a few months ago, the disc tray got jammed. Okay. So uh, that's why we had to get rid of it. Okay, so how did you get rid of it? We just uh, threw it out. Threw it in the garbage? Yes. Okay. So did you ever uh, uh, use the online 
uh, Xbox Live. Xbox Live. Yes. Okay. And what was your username on Xbox? My uh, gamer tag was uh, Xbox Light Side. Xbox Light Side. Yes. All one word. Yes. Uh, any capitals? The first letter. First letter. And uh, in your conversations with other people online while playing Xbox or while using Xbox, uh, who did you discuss or talk to about uh, conducting this mission? I didn't uh, discuss it with anyone over Xbox Live. Okay. Uh, who did you discuss uh, specifically uh, with about this mission using any other type of communication? Other than Fortune? Yeah. No one. No one. So it's fair to say no one knew that uh, you were planning to, to, to do this attack? Correct. Okay. I want to talk to you, and this is very important, I want to talk to you about uh, this uh, Edmonton uh, attack that's going to take place later this year. You said it was in what month? November 15, November 2018. 2018. Uh, what more? Uh, what, what more information can you tell me about this uh, this impending attack? The only information I have is that um, someone hinted in the uh, as a reply. He simply said that uh, this has. Yeah, I think I know what you mean, bro. Uh, this uh, kind of this has kind of inspired me. Um, I am planning something similar, November 15 this year. How do you know it was going to be? A reply. Uh, it was a public post. It was a public post. How do you know it was going to take place in Edmonton? Because he said uh, Edmonton. Because he said Edmonton. In the post. So I if I was to go on to Fortune, would I be able to see this post? Uh, due to the uh, high high volume, the high frequency of posts on Fortune, the all the threads get pushed out very uh, quickly. However, it is possible that they, they uh, get archived on some other website. Okay, and what specifically what thread was this under? Uh, it doesn't have a name because I left that uh, field blank. Okay, so but what uh, what subfolder is it in? Um, is it like it, there's no uh, subfolders on Fortran. So, oh, I thought you said that there was uh, right, right, radical, or. Oh, it fell, fell, fell under the category of alt-right. Alt-right. Oh, it fell in, it's in the alt-right uh, category. Yes. Okay, so that's where, if, if it was to be found, that's where it would be. Yes. Okay. What other uh, impending attacks do you know of? That's the only one I know of. That's the only one? Yes. Okay. Um, have, you, uh, have, you, have you had any other discussion with this fellow who, who was planning this attack in Edmonton? No. No. Who is he? I don't know. It's uh, it said anonymous. That's the whole point of 4chan. Right, right, okay. All right. Is there anything else that you can tell me that might help me better understand what's happened here today? There isn't anything else I can offer, to be honest. Okay. Can I ask you to sit tight for a couple seconds? Sure. Thanks, mate. I really appreciate you talking. Uh, I'm going to be straight up with you. I find you fascinating. I really do. Um, I've never met somebody like you before. And uh, um, this has been quite an experience for me, as much as I think it has been for you. Um, can I ask you something? 
how were you treated here today? Very well, actually. Very well. Okay. And uh, uh, I'm talking about overall, with you know, from the moment you were arrested right up to now. I, yeah, I was treated well. Treated well. Okay. In terms of the way I treated you here today. I feel you treated me well, well as well. Well, well as well. Okay. Um, uh, what's what's going to happen here today? Uh, are you? I don't know if you're familiar with the process. So we're, we're going to we're unfortunately we're going to have to hold you. Okay, because um, we 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 can't release people for certain charges and the ones that you're facing we can't release you, which means that you're going to go to court tomorrow or today. Uh, you'll uh, you'll be in front of the judge. Okay, uh, there will be a lawyer there. Uh, who will advocate or will defend you on your on your on your behalf. Uh, there will be a crown attorney who will uh, uh, who's the prosecutor who will uh, advocate for the crown or the uh, the uh, for 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 the for, for the crown. Uh, and they will argue in terms of um, uh, your your bail, your release. Okay. Um, uh, following that. Uh, court dates will be set in the future. Um, uh, you will eventually get a lawyer, make application to apply for a lawyer. Um, they will receive, your lawyer will receive disclosure from us. They'll get a copy of this, this video. Um, and then with meetings with the lawyer, you can discuss what it is you, you want to do, okay? Um, I'm going to ask you this, because uh, it's important. Um, Ten people died here today. Um, Fifteen people were seriously injured. Um, I think it's important to ask how you feel about that. I feel like uh, I accomplished my mission. You feel like you accomplished your mission? Yes. Okay. If the families of those people who were murdered and who were injured were in this room right now, what would you say to them? I honestly don't know what I would say. Would you apologize? I honestly don't know. No. Okay. Can we shake your hand? Sure. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Is there any questions you have for me? I don't have any questions. Okay. Uh, if I need to speak to you again, would you be up to that? Yes. Okay. Um, i got to just make sure there's a, a, a room available. What I'm going to do is, um, if you don't mind, can I get you to hang out here? Sure. And I'm going to get an officer to come in here, and he's going to take you back downstairs. Uh-huh. You'll, you'll be alone in the room. Uh, if you need something to eat, you just let him, uh -huh. let him know. He'll get you something to eat. Use the washroom. You need to lie down, have a sleep, do whatever you want. Uh -huh. You can do that, all right? Uh -huh. Okay, so, so hang tight. I'll make sure officer comes in. Uh -huh.
No, sir. No, no. I'm going to take you back downstairs, okay? Mm -hmm. So just like we did before, i got to hold on to your arm, okay, while we walk? Mm -hmm. Okay, the uh, day on my clock is uh, Tuesday, April 24th, 2018. Time by my clock is 3.04 and we'll be concluding this interview.